So, hello and welcome everybody. Completion. This is the first field test of Project Aptarium uh, in which we hopefully not all crash and die. Say hi. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hello. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, in this, this, is, uh, this is a game is not going to be the uh, start of a campaign or anything like that. This is just a one shot in which we are going to be testing the core mechanics of the game and how do they function, how does it all work with Roll20, how does the interface uh, help you know, get the game going without unnecessary interruptions, if, it's, uh, if the general rules work first and foremost. And also the most important uh, things, which is uh, social rules, then some investigation, some maybe combat stuff and admin and whatever else. And our dog has a hiccup. Yeah, I think it's yeah, think it's, it's sleep. <laughs> so, uh, everybody, everybody read the rules uh, uh, mostly. So, what do you guys think about them before we start? Well, I uh, I actually wrote a whole bunch of notes yesterday, so I, I'm not really experienced enough with these things to draw a conclusion. But at least it sounds interesting. That's that's for sure. Puzzling to me uh, in the aspects that I mentioned, the, the turn pacing, etc. But we'll see how it goes, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, the design intention is to make a, a crunchy modular system that uh, can be you know, scaled up or down depending on how uh, technical people want to get to the rules. So right now, this is the crunchy version for, uh, that, that, that tuning it down is going to be easier later. And uh, yeah, it's designed to basically overcome most of the things that annoy the traditional role-playing games, like the turn system being basically a whack fest and, uh, and the fact that fast people get to do stuff for half an hour while everybody else waits, uh, waits and so on. So hopefully we will fix that right quick in this system, but we will see that in the test. Personally, when I was reading through the rules, I had to read... I actually personally had to read them three times, I think. They, they're they entertaining. They sound extremely entertaining. And it, I'm very looking forward to actually playing this. I, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to just, like, forget how to do stuff. I mean, yeah, you don't have access to those 20, so you can't see the interface. Yes, this game has one, but I think we can. It's gonna come up back online on your end. Hopefully, but here you have the hardest task, which is not actually seeing the buttons and still things. Yeah, yeah. I wish my internet actually was working. Yeah. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it. I'm looking forward to playing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, thanks. Yeah, that was more or less my feeling of it, reading it, was that I'd probably get used to it much more if I played it out. But it looked interesting and really fun. I especially enjoyed the scaling, the ability to scale. That's something that would be really fun to play with, I think. Well, like, uh, yeah, the difficulty like, between like, the very narrative uh, game and the crunchy game is not yet in place. We only have the crunchy system, but the game scales on multiple timelines. It's a mix of our fourth game strategy game, tactical game, traditional role-playing game, and the like, like that a lot. Well, I'm personally super hyped for the social rules, because I really want to have some trade deals. <laughs> With proper negotiation rules, it's gonna be less of a player skill challenge than an actual game. Because nobody expects people to know how to swing a sword, but for some reason, charisma related stuff and social related related stuff's always supposed to be player choice. And that's just kinda unfair. Mm, yeah, I think so too that for you have uh, mechanics that are equally in depth both in social stuff and in hacking and in 
fighting, trading, research, discoveries, and so on, even crafting items uh, in a consistent and balanced manner, uh, so that uh, every part of the game is equally engaging. So it doesn't matter if you're shooting a gun at somebody or piloting a ship uh, in docking station or having trade negotiations with the NABU, like uh, everything is supposed to be fun and equally in depth. Well, let's see how we can break it. Well, yeah, uh, that's the first of many tests. Right now we're just seeing if the mechanics work as uh, they do on paper. So yeah, this uh, game today isn't going to take place in Aperio's normal setting, because by the time I set everything up for this test, the setting file was missing because the computer needs to work broke. But uh, we have them recovered, so the next game is going to be in the proper setting with our satellite campaign and see how it works. But right now we have an improvised setting that's basically XCOM. <laughs> so our characters today are agents yellow, red, blue and green that go to a small town somewhere in Bangkok, Nowhere, America where they discover, uh, have to investigate the reports of mysterious lights, uh, bovine mutilations, missing people and what have you. And uh, it's, uh, it's not scripted, it's built uh, entirely using the Game Master scenario creation rules that aren't yet in the core rulebook because I have to rework them a little bit with the newest version. But uh, generally the game, uh, once it's finished, is going to allow even the super novice game master design a campaign and a bunch of scenarios uh, like, like half an hour before the game to just sit down and start playing and it's also going to support uh, improvisation and it's going to support player agency and in fact uh, you don't even have to have a game master you can play the game with uh, just one of the players being designated uh, as the I don't know, like the bank player in Monopoly, to just hold all the cards and create scenarios uh, they go. Or it can just even be done with the cosmopolitan consensus and uh, actually just in-game mechanics of using scenarios as you play. So technically, in the final version, you could have a game like this, which is made before the game uh, scenario. Or, you know, you can just gather up open a couple of beers and roll yourself a campaign and it's going to be uh, an emergent game play of the big proportions, hopefully. And uh, yeah, there is a couple of interface pieces you can see on the screen right now, which are going to be important because the game doesn't operate like your run of the mill uh, basic uh, game <laughs> because it's on interface that comes into play a lot and initiative was not only for the combats and so on. So let's start maybe from the bottom left. First you see the initiative uh, track, uh, every character, as you can see, has more than one. You have physical initiative and mental initiative and uh, every character has a certain number of actions that we just put the character sheet on the screen. There we go. So uh, this is of course a mock-up of what our final character should be going to look like. Uh, but as you can see, every character has a certain amount of action, which is uh, determined both uh, from their attributes and other uh, things like gear. That uh, is going to determine how many things they can uh, do in an action phase. And they are being used to play action cards which are the equivalent of declaration in other RPG games. Uh, the physical cards that you can see and they have a shortcut of rules on them. Uh, and they are being played in the appropriate initiative phase, uh, either physical or mental, using either stamina or morale as well as an action point. And everything in the game happens not uh, through uh, some convoluted means, uh, it's simply resource management that determines how fast and how much you want to do in your turn. And that and, uh, physical initiative is of course the physical action cards like running, shooting or whatever, while mental is for mental cards like uh, talking, hacking and so on. That way characters that are physically fast can do their thing, while characters that are uh, mentally able can do their thing, and uh, nobody has to wait half an hour for the other players to finish. 
Let me just put up a random action card on the screen. I'm a mighty bigger. So, uh, if you have any questions. You may want to explain what the attributes and skills are. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have any questions concerning what I just said. So far, so good, I think. Yeah, I'm good, I think. We'll, we'll, we'll need to get into it to see how it will work. Yeah, I'm, I'm on that boat too. Yep, yep. Uh, okay, so yeah, you have uh, different uh, attributes, which is toughness, fitness, awareness, result, logic, and weight. The first three are uh, physical attributes, the other three are mental, and they all have uh, skills assigned to them. And how it works is that you roll the number of D10s equal to your attribute always. There is never going to be any exception for that. Generally, the mechanic is the whole rule set is made to have no exceptions whatsoever from anything. It's all consistent across the board. And the skills, if you have ranks in them, reduce your difficulty uh, in your tasks. So the basic difficulty is 6, so it's only meaning if you roll 6 or higher on the difficulty 10, then you score the mark. And you can lower that if you are actually trained in these skills, but everybody can use any skills, there is no uh, limitations here. And uh, let's like the intimidation card that we have in here. It works from result, attribute, and intimidation skills, meaning that the agent red is uh, throwing four dice and his base difficulty is three instead of six because he has three ranks in intimidation skill. And it costs him one. Sorry, one action and one point of morality. So, uh, whenever he uses that card, you reduce his morale by one, and he has one fewer action to play that turn, and you can spend other cards in any bit like what he wants. There is no limitations, no additional modifiers for doing multiple things in the same action phase. There is no needing to, I don't know, build up house of cards <laughs> to play things. That's basically the entire thing. And you have to manage your uh, character so that neither your stamina nor your morale or your zero or lower. So basically, you have to manage your expenditure of resources. Sounds, sounds good so far? Yeah. I'm following. Yeah, makes sense to me. And that's why we have those pieces of interface on the screen. You can uh, see there is uh, there are sliders and buttons. You can set them up at your current level on your character sheets. There's like two buttons in the bottom of your stamina and morale. So Agent Red has five points of stamina and six points of morale. And when uh, he plays Intimidation card, it's going to be reduced by one. And, uh, to, and uh, to regain it, you just have to play a take a breath card, uh, which is a bit of a pause. It doesn't mean that when your stamina falls uh, fall below uh, one, it's like, oh no, I'm dead. It just means you have to take a second to gather your thoughts, catch a breath, and uh, re you know, re institute your senses to the, uh, be able to act more. And uh, it uh, basically works like that. While your initiatives, uh, is uh, the number of the character sheet with a one with the other to it for physical and mental work the same way and every time and that decides on the order of doing things and also uh, even outside of combat I know usually in RPG games only combat initiative matters but uh, here it uh, works all the time because people who uh, have more actions than other or people who move faster than other even mentally, have, you know, like quicker weak, uh, get advantages over other people. There is a rule called combined action, meaning that for every card, you can spend more than one action to play it, and when you do it, uh, then it additionally reduces your difficulty. So, for example, let's say Agent Red doesn't have Intimidation skill of 3, he's got the 0, which means that if it's 4 resolve points, he would have uh, uh, like the difficulty for Intimidation of 6, but if he spends uh, 3 actions instead of 1, then it's going to be 4, basically. Uh, 
and that's that, that, that's basically it. That's all the copy. Questions, flyers, memos. None. Leon. Oh, hey. there we go. There we go. There we go. Yay! There we go. Uh, be right back. Agent Yellow has been there. You notice, you notice I specifically didn't put Agent Orange on the table. I so wanted one of the Agents to be orange, but I think it's now too low hanging. Too low hanging. Too low hanging. Anyway, anyway, I was, so I was gonna one... ask. Yeah. yeah? I, I was gonna ask if one of them was gonna be orange, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I even had a fucking ready, I just designed for the idea for the last second. It would probably give you lemon lime. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, generally there is more to it than that, there are uh, additional uh, stakes, for example, your difficulty is uh, coming from two uh, sources, one is the base difficulty modified by the skills and so on, I can do that, and additionally to that there is uh, a mechanic called resultant cloud, it's uh, I guess using combat terminology for modern RPG games, armor and armor penetration, Resistance and cloud. Yeah, yeah sorry, resistance and cloud. Right, right, right. I brain, but... Okay, the internet is now going up and down, so it should be okay in a minute or two, but I'm going to stay on my phone until it stays up. But it is. Okay. The outage is actually over now, which is great. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep explaining stuff uh, while you're connecting. So, uh, generally, you have resistance and cloud, and they function like the other games are more and are more penetration. Uh, meaning, the value of resistance makes, uh, raises the difficulty, while cloud reduces the value of resistance, but not any lower than that. So, let's say you have the base difficulty 3, amino 6, and you have four points of resistance on top of that, that makes the difficulty 10, and you can't approach the subject unless you uh, lower it to cloud. So let's say you have the cloud of 3, that makes the difficulty 7. And if you, for example, would have 5 cloud with that 4 resistance situation, it would only re uh, re remove resistance, but not actually reduce the difficulty. And uh, that introduces another layer into the mechanics that uh, puts a lot of crunch in it because you can influence it with a lot of action cards, with a lot of equipment, with a lot of your, uh, many, uh, your many things. There is probably key different separate mechanics that uh, affect us. And it works uh, in social, it works in combat, it works in sneaking. <coughs> It generally influences all of the tests in the game. So, uh, do you guys uh, follow with the resistance and cloud mechanics? Yeah, seems good. Yeah, I got it. Uh, and then we have two basic different types of tasks. You have the uh, sub-task, which is you basically roll the dice and it uh, rolls the effect. And we have the main task, which is the objective of a scene in the game. And it determines what happens. So basically you have an overarching goal to achieve and you can use whatever applicable skills you want to contribute to that. There is, uh, no penalties for cooperation, this entire thing is intended for team play, unlike other team RPGs. <laughs> so basically everybody can cooperate freely and uh, you guys sum up the marks uh, you scored and when you reach the number and then uh, the scene goes your way. And if your opposition reaches the number or reduces your uh, score marks below zero, depends uh, on whether they're running the same scene or depends on they have their own main task they're following. Then uh, they basically. So that's basically all of the mechanics. Questions? None. I'm good. Yeah, I've got nothing. I think I'm getting all of it. Okay. okay. So, uh, let's start, I think. So, you were Agent Yellow, Red, Blue and Green, sent by the Agency of Fighting Alien Invasions to a small town 
where uh, locals have uh, reported flashing lights in the sky, cows dancing macarena, coyotes eating their own tail, and the lizards playing canasta. And you have to investigate the mysterious, the mysterious activity. You, your black car without registration numbers pulls up the main street of a small town with barely a couple hundred people living in it. And you can uh, park it wherever you want. You can give you control over it. And it's a bleak and dreary morning, so there is barely anybody on the street. Just people going to and from work. The air smells of which mahogany, I mean, of mist and think an upcoming rain. You can smell something weird in the air as you approach, some kind of tension, and maybe, maybe some tacos. So, uh, you, so uh, you have highlighted uh, the buildings, on to the, uh, the important buildings in the town on your uh, personal computers. It's Mrs. Jenkins' house that reported the lights. Then you have uh, the Bronsons, who also uh, filed mysterious reports about noises at night, the town hall, the city mall, the library, and the church. And from here on out, uh, you can go wherever the hell you want. We are starting the first main task which is investigation you have to score you have to accumulate uh, 10 marks before your unknown opponent finishes whatever it is that they're doing in the city uh, you can use any skill you want you can head uh, wherever you want this is a social investigation encounter that's going to be testing how uh, mechanics work social encounters are uh, happening on intervals of one minute As Agent Blue drives the car through the smallest town in area, or maybe the biggest one, we're in the middle of nowhere, literally, uh, she turns back. Agent Red, so, sir, where are we starting the, the, this investigation? I'm assuming you're the officer because you're the only one with the command skill. Oh, well, yeah, that would make sense then. Um, why don't we try Miss Jenkins' house first, and then the Bronson. Was there any of the reports that were slightly shady, or somebody who didn't uh, sound like they would be forthcoming with the, situ with the information? Because I know where my strengths lie. Uh, I mean, your bureau, but Bureau. 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 Oh, bureau. Oh, okay, so your bureau received information about uh, the events happening in that small town only because somebody called, so it wouldn't make sense for them to call and not be forthcoming about that. And yet, uh, this is, uh, by the way, in the Arcarion's mechanic, this is what you see on the screen right now, it's called a scenario, it's comprised of modules, and every one of those green things is uh, one module, of the three screens, one, one module that uh, you can uh, interact with, and spaces between them are uh, called corridors that uh, connect them. And it's actually, what you see right now on the screen is actually the adventure structure. It has a rules behind it and stuff. So, uh, you're running on an initiative, you can head to whichever city you want, then you will impart the car, yeah, and by just putting the token wherever you want. And the first agents on the mental initiative are Agent Red and Agent Green. So that is okay, so I'm, uh, I want to go talk to Miss Jenkins, so I'm going to go because she was the one who called in the report, so probably the safest thing to do is to go talk to her first. Okay, I'm gonna make... Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna just quickly give you guys control, control of your token. Okay, okay you can move the, to whatever you need to edit. Okay. So, okay, uh, so uh, you here you can see, I'm going to take you to the, take you to the second, you should, should see the action cards in the roof when you're in your cell. So you knock on the door and the Miss Jenkins is going to open them. 
and uh, you have to verify the action that you're going to play. Uh, sorry, you cut out there at the end. Oh, oh yeah, I said I said you should prepare the actions you are going to be playing because uh, this is an actual encounter. So, do you want to So, Miss Jenkins opens the door. She's an older lady with a very unfashionable hairstyle. Yes, hello. Oh, you must be from the government. Yes, you can tell from my lovely sunglasses. Um, wait, where are the cards again? <laughs> Uh, um, on, in the, on the end of the court uh, room. And, and I also open them right now on the screen. So, oh, okay. So, uh, you can just keep those you want, but I'm going to make the room going to be on the screen. You have uh, a certain amount of mental actions, and you can play as many of those cards as you want. And the descriptions of what they exactly doing are on the card, and you can very much combo them together in a chain if you want. So what happens right now is that uh, there is no turns per se in the game. We have two stages after the initiative, which is the declaration stage and then the resolution stage. So resolution stage is uh, when the action happens. It all happens in real time, while declaration stage is taking uh, place in order of initiative from the slowest to the fastest. In this particular scene, in which are uh, Legion Green and Red, they can decide what actions they are playing, and so will Miss Jenkins. And uh, they just decide which card they're playing, in which order. Remember, you can play one card multiple times if you want to lower the difficulty and by the cost of more actions. Remember that it does not cost you more morale or stamina to do it. I mean, in case of sustained actions, instant actions cost you more morale and stamina if you play them multiple times. There is a letter. Yeah, ambition type. And yeah. yeah, so you can do whatever you want with the use of those cards. You can try playing an investigation card. Yeah, yeah you can use in, you can use investigation card to uh, gather information. You can also use uh, any of your social cards to gather information. Skills are interchangeable, and you can use any ones that are appropriate for the situation. So investigation, as in I ask people around, are, uh, are good. Perception is good in the situation. Uh, intimidation is good in the situation to gather information. Uh, any, any, if you are doing a legwork task, an investigation task. So any card you use that is appropriate to the situation is the piece of an investigation card, not only the investigation skill. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to do investigation and perception. So I wanted to use perception to just sort of have a look around the house, see if there's anything unusual about it. And investigation is to just ask her to give, it, give some more details about what she was calling. Sure, sure. give me a second. And Agent Green? Yeah, um, well, since Agent Red is doing the investigation and the perception, I guess I should play a perception too and look for APC. Yeah, you can, you can answer uh, yeah. any marks you score are going to be counted towards the same pool. You can very much use the same skill. Well, so yeah, I'll I'll, I'll play one perception card then. If that's if that's correct. Should I click somewhere, or is it just? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm copying them to the general screen. All right. And in the general screen, you should be able to move them. I made the little thing tiny one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, uh, Miss Jenkins is going to just interact because she doesn't have a step. So I'm not going to put her card in there. She's doing. And generally, uh, now we are moving to a declaration stage in which, uh, uh, as you've been declaring technically from the slowest to the fastest, but uh, Miss Jenkins declared, oh, you must be from the government, she's interacting with you, and then you declare what you are going to 
do. So uh, in the resolution stage, the uh, order of actions switch up, and now the fastest will first and the slowest uh, afterwards. So red ring green from first, and then Jenkins. Sorry, who's rolling first? Uh, red and uh, green are rolling first, and you sum up your mark to the main task, while Jenkins rolls after you. You roll first, red. It doesn't matter yes. if you yes, guys are both at the same time. Okay, so I roll the number of dice I have. Yep, number of di dice to the correct attribute that corresponds with the skill that we use. So if you use two separate attributes, then you roll the dice. So investigation is wit, right? Yep. yep. So that's five dice. Five dice for me. And the uh, what was the target number? Modified The target dice? number is six minus your skill. So three for me then. Yep. And uh, you scored five marks. And the other one was perception, right? Yep. And you have uh, that awareness, so that's three dice, and you also have a difficulty of three because you have three points in perception. Okay, so you've uh, scored uh, six marks altogether towards the main task, and now Agent Green rolls his perception, uh, which is awareness of two with the difficulty of four. So two dice and the difficulty is four. their stamina and like moral pool or is it only in combat okay okay so now that you wrote you didn't score any any marks uh, so uh, remember to reduce your uh, moral stamina you have the slide slider down there so agent red reduces one point of stamina and one point of morale and agent green reduces uh, stamina by one So, uh, Miss Jenkins scored uh, two marks on herself, uh, reducing the total number of marks that we scored for the party still on the offense. And you can see that Miss Jenkins uh, looks uh, kind of scared, shady. She's hiding her hands under long sleeves and kind of covering her with her pouch. Oh, yes, yes, I, I, I did call you here. You must be from the government. But, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, been a long night, and I'm an old woman. I must have just, uh, you know, how it is. I got scared. Just, uh, just birds and the swamp gas. But uh, you can see that she's not being exactly truthful with you, and that uh, she's hiding bruises on her face. Agent Red and Green. Um, Red, I think you should intimidate her. Intimidate the scared old woman. Sure, why don't we do it? We'll try and just sort of impress upon her using our status as government agents to get her to tell us exactly what happened. Okay, okay. can we get you an intimidation action card? And uh, in the next action phase, which is like a minute past, past, so in the next minute, you have all of your actions back, but your stamina and morale points that you spent remain spent. And again, uh, Miss Jenkins, the card towards the world she picked up. I'm going to actually put the action card in here. Because she's 
she's slower, so see the card before. You want to just going to put in the card like that, because I think uh, like, I might decide it might be better to uh, see how it works with both sides with the card in. So, uh, how many actions are you spending on that intimidation? Uh, I think I will spend both of my mental actions on it. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. And Agent Green? Um, I think, uh, is, is there a skip turn card? Because <laughs> I think... I think it's better that the uh, red that where the handle the, handles this, <laughs> or a card or something. There is a take a breath card. Yeah, you can use the take a breath card in which you make a, a test and then uh, you uh, regain as many moral and stamina points as many marks. Yeah, so that sounds about right. I'm doing that. I'm taking a breather while while Red screams at the old lady. I'm not gonna scream. You don't have to scream to intimidate <laughs> me. Okay. Okay. Well, you can use so, your favorite scary tech. Okay. okay, so in declaration stage, uh, you are going to be rolling your toughness, and the smart score are going to be uh, in, uh, restore your spent uh, morale and stamina points, but not above the maximum that you have in Okay, so now we are moving to the... Yes, you need to yes, have lungs to take a breath. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd like to get back. Plugging the OCR USB cord to the, to the wall. Okay, so we have a, another resolution stage, which means that the fastest from first and the lady goes second. Sorry, what was that? I was typing a thing. Yeah, uh, so we have a another resolution stage with the fastest roll that has first. So you only roll once for those two intimidations. Maybe make the card bigger for you. You only roll once, but you reduce your difficulty by additional one because you spent two actions on it. And of course. I get four yeah. dice for this, right? Yeah, you, and then... yeah, you always you always roll the amount of dice because you're at it. And I reduce it by three for intimidation and then one more because I'm taking two actions. Yep, yep exactly. exactly so. There we go. And the uh, lady is using her two actions to uh, fight back. And she's got three marks, amazingly. Uh, why did you have eight? Oh, because you already know it. Okay. There you go. So you, you're yelling at her, and she's, she's basically just like all uh, completely collapsing inside her down. I was like, I, 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 I really can't. I was like, I told you all I know. I told you all I know. I call it now. I didn't really know anything else. Please don't take my cat away. Mr. Whiskers is 20 years old already. I forgot to do for the first check. Oh, oh, meanwhile, uh, uh, maybe we can do another, another, scene, another scene, scene that's happening with other players. So, uh, Mr. Um, Agent Yellow and Agent Blue, where are you headed? Where are you headed? Well, Agent Yellow, knowing our strong suits and aren't really talking to people. How about we take a stroll through the town and see if we can notice something suspicious with yeah, all of have, those reports have a look of, around. Yes, with the reports of weird sounds and weird uh, lights and killed cows. Maybe we can actually stumble upon something interesting. Sounds like a plan to me. Can we, can we in this in this situation, try to stay out of sight? 
Or are we gonna be sk two skulking people in black suits? And I mean, I mean you, are, you are basically standing next to your car and the streets are pretty empty, so you can try to disappear by looking behind the building. You can try to search uh, Mr. Jenkins' yard, for example. I would very much like to do that. Okay, so uh, you can go to the concealment so right now. I'm gonna show you the action card. What was that last sentence? I did not you get to you. To consumer for that, I will show you the action card for that in a second. Ah, okay. So you can go into concealment, and that means you are rolling your uh, fitness. So it's a physical skill, and stealth uh, is uh, reducing your difficulty. I have two physical actions, so I'd like to go into concealment and then use perception to look around. I also have two physical actions. So, does that is per, so perception is a physical one? Yes, perception is a physical action, you are looking around. Okay, I'm also going to basically do the same thing that Ian was doing. I'm going to attempt to go to concealment, and then I'm going to... Uh, perception. Okay. okay, no problem. So, uh, both of you first go fitness and the marks score count. Uh, as uh, a resistance to stop you from now on. And then you can also perception, which is also going to do the main task that you are doing, which is interrogating this change. Yeah, you roll the number of two dice equal to your attributes and you reduce your skill level from the two. Well, I have no other way than or maximum marks because I have five skill in stealth, so... Yeah, yeah if, if at any point you have no choice but to score maximum marks, you don't have to actually roll, you can just, uh, you know, the, the number of marks you got. So yeah, so, yeah uh, that together puts you in uh, the, the scene at 10. There is no opposition in that scene in the back. And, uh, so yes, yeah, skulking in behind, you uh, actually find in the back, you see that there is a white car with uh, that looks pretty well maintained, although very old, and somebody just sprayed something green, like toxic green all over it, and all the windows are broken, and uh, you find cards saying, if you say anything, Mr. Whiskers gets it. Uh, can I take a photo of it and send it to my boss with the information of Mrs. Jenkins being threatened by somebody so who wants to kill her cat? Yeah, yeah, of course, it's 2020. You have I mean, yes, it would be, I guess, interaction, interact card, so it doesn't have stamina cost. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, well, technically, uh, in, in, in this declaration stage, uh, Agent Blue is slower, so she declares first, and Agent Red and uh, Agent Red to whom the message is gets to play any card he wants against you, but you can just take away to get the information. What? Because so you are in the declaration of agent slower, so you declare yes. fair first, while agent red is faster, so he yes. acts first. So. But in the situation, I think we can just uh, move on to him receiving the map. So I've just received this message, right? You bet. You bet. Okay, I, uh, I probably want to ask Mrs. Miss Jenkins who would want to hurt her. Oh, oh. Are you showing her the picture? Yeah, I'll show her the picture. 
which the moment she sees the picture, she's like, completely collapses and stops resisting, because she's got a mark of my task against her. We got very old, old for working. And she kind of like looks at the picture, Google, like, I, I don't know who she was. He's a new man in town, very deep. I don't know where he is. But he said, if I tell you anything, that uh, the I'm never going to see my cat again. And she starts crying. Sure, I'm gonna bother comforting the old woman crying about her cat. Um, I guess I will promise that we'll get the cat back. I mean, it's just like he's on the couch. Protect oh, that's the fine. cat. We'll protect the cat. We'll be fine. Uh, but you don't the government to spread 5G and cause viruses and stuff. Uh, I think we should also ask about. Uh, whether that guy promised to return. I've never seen him before. He was uh, very skinny, very thin. And uh, he broke my car and threatened me. Well, did he say he would come back to do something or. No, nothing. Yes, if I, yes, yes. He did if I tell anything to anybody. Well, shall we maybe set up camp here? She told us the info, so maybe he knows. So we'll come looking for her. We should probably check in across the street as well, real quick, before we start staking out this place. Oh, uh, oh uh, we, we, you can of course totally do that, but uh, everybody, everybody rolls a 1v10 and then increase the initiative scores by that number, that would be great because we haven't done that because the initiatives are so low. But it doesn't matter, it's just technically what you have in a character sheet plus a 1v10 and that's like giving each other the set. On both, on both sides, you don't have to roll twice. On, on both sides, for the same one. Now becoming important. So you're crossing, so you're crossing the street you're and you are heading uh, to the other side to uh, take uh, part in the second scene. Uh, uh, who goes? I'll go for sure. Okay, okay. Google is open. I would like to stay where I am, next to that destroyed car, and look for any signs that would that could lead from it towards the mysterious man who destroyed it. Um, I'll probably camp near the cat, just to make sure that it's... Um. Since I don't really want to leave Red alone, I'll go help him out. Okay, okay. So, uh, Red and Yellow are moving to the side of the house on the other side of the street. And now, uh, the things are going up to happen in initiative, uh, so we know the order of events. So that means, uh, first is the scenario that doesn't play any cards, then Agent uh, Green's physical initiative. Uh, are we planning something for it? Um, sorry, come again. Didn't hear the last sentence. Uh, are, are you declaring something in your physical initial? Like any physical, oh, like any right. physical action, action card. Um, is there something like an Overwatch 
thing or whatever. So yeah, uh, I'm doing that. I'm just gonna overwatch near the cat in case something comes by to actually mangle it. Okay. okay. So I put the card in here, same thing, same. And the uh, agent threats uh, physically. I assume interact to knock on the door. Yeah, pretty much. I'm just gonna knock on the door. Okay. Okay. And the uh, green's mental initiative. Uh, you're just using perception, nothing else. So I assume nothing. Unless you want to play something. Hello, 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 can you hear? Wait, did, did you mean me again? Because yes, I kind yes, of. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, uh, right. Uh, but your mental initiative, Mr. Money, playing something. Mental initiative. Um, No, I don't think so. I mean, okay. I'm just near a cat. I could try interrogating the cat, of course, if that's an option. But, but it's, it's a new uh, account, I thought you were say me out, I was say you out. But yeah, but yeah they, they, you can't interrogate the cat, so we can move to uh, Agent of Red's mental initiative. Uh, I think I will do investigation. I'm just going to ask whoever comes to the door a few questions about what's been going on across the street and in the town. Oh, well, one second, I made the card too small. Let's see what it says. We will make smaller tokens for the next test play. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, every single piece of interface you see is uh, uh, mock up. Okay. okay, and uh, there will be a person opening the door to use the card against in a second, so uh, he's actually not higher in check than you. I'm not going to put NPC cards on the table, it makes a mess. Okay, I do blue. Not in my mental initiative, but the next one is going to be my physical initiative, which is going to be, I suppose, the perception task of finding some signs of whoever yeah. destroyed the car of Mrs. Jenkins. Maybe some tracks. Okay, okay. Uh, and the uh, agent yellow. Um, I'm not going to do anything with my mental initiative, but I am going to also kind of do a perception generally. <laughs> I just saw the face. Generally around the, um, just like kind of getting looking around seeing if i can see anything interesting at first real glance and every time you, you don't tell me how many actions you spent i also will spend one so remember uh, to reduce your appropriate uh, stamina or morale pools by yeah. The... Yeah. wait uh since i have two physical actions can i actually spend two on it yes of course oh okay that's going to reduce your stamina by two. All right, so perception. This is, where's the perception part? Where it is. Damn. Okay. okay, now we're moving to the declaration stage. So first, this is going to be Agent Yellow's perception. Is it a new task? Uh, Whatever we're doing now. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes it's a new main task. So, that's a geo. And when we have all the rows, we are going to move on to say what's going on. No, uh, normally during the game, we have a uh, special place to put the, the interface where we will mark how many marks something scored. And then only like after all the rolls were made, we want to the, the resolution stage to describe what actually happened. But we don't have a part of the interface right now because we didn't make it. Because we didn't keep to make it for them. I'm gonna have some. That was the first test, of course. So we have, so we have to have something to uh, mark our marks. So we're going to do the resolution stage. 
but right, but right now we're just gonna uh, roll and uh, describe what happened at the same time so it doesn't create a mess. So perception first. Agent Yellow. Well, I'm gonna have to have someone roll for me because my internet pooped out on my computer. Um, I spent two actions on it, and yeah, I just my internet pooped out on my computer, and I can't roll. Yeah, uh, that's basically. I would even have to specifically roll because your difficulty was two after spending two actions, meaning that you scored uh, four. And I reduced your stamina by two. Okay. Okay. So uh, you're looking around and you see that uh, the door has been marked with a strange symbol that seems to be two dimensional somehow. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. agent lose perception. I have awareness of four and perception of five, which means I'm scoring four marks without rolling. There you go. And the agent read the notes on the door. Don't I see? <coughs> and uh, then Yes? Yeah, sorry, I was uh, wondering if I had to do something just then. Yeah, yeah, I'm describing what happens. So, because we have a situation that happens for the first time in mechanics where your mental action goes faster than your physical action, but is dependent on the time you first open the door and then to put the first of who opens. In that case, you can delay your physical or mental action so that they happen at the same time, which is what will happen here. You will delay your mental initiative from, uh, so that it happens at the same time as your physical initiative and you, you are going to be knocking on the door, somebody's gonna open, a little kid, and you're gonna then go your investigation to ask questions. The questions are those going to be an answer all for that yeah. investigation. Well, if it's a kid, I'd probably ask them if their parents are home. I mean, yeah, it's, it's uh, the, a, a social term takes a minute of their time, so it's easily ask multiple questions. Yeah, I guess I would ask if uh, if their parents are home first. Well, last, but um, ask them if they've heard anything going on around here. Anything strange? Anyone new in the? T Who is it? The strange man in sunglasses asking questions. Okay. okay. So, I'll do the investigation. So uh, it would be reduced by three because of my investigation skill, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So the kids scored the two marks. You scored four. That puts you up to ten at the end of this turn. The task questions to all the kids, so uh, so, uh the kid opens and she's like, Oh no, no, my parents are in call. Uh, or something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Uh, uh, those bastards, or something. Uh, yes, I have seen them. It's like a weird man talking to me, strange. It's like shaking his feet, like, his fists at her. He had really long hands, like stupid, like slender man. Yeah. And uh, there was some lights, and somebody was scratching at the door last night. I don't know what he was doing. Very strange. Slender man, I hope it's not slender. Yeah, yeah it would be cool. Hey, that was good school, school principal, though. No? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna leave the kid alone. I, I think we got what we needed, which is that we've got a strange slender man like person walking around, which and I will text. And there's a symbol on the door. Maybe Just of Slenderman. Oh no. 
Deja sin voluntador. Ah, good. Give me a second. I'm gonna go grab my cell phone. The kid runs into the house and then like, comes and takes a picture and immediately streams it to YouTube with that picture saying Slenderman Mark me for that. Please subscribe. And don't forget to smash that like button. Okay. Uh, so you, you, you got another clue. And uh, yeah, Mr. Green, there is nothing really happening in the house. Nobody's coming to between Jenkins. But he will tell you don't really have to know for that. And well, we have also one who's still expert. Can I find any drugs? Did I find any tracks? You never told me. Oh, oh and the uh, agent, the uh, did find mysterious footsteps that are like somebody had very narrow and long feet. Uh, and something's wrong with the tracker, so it's completely smooth. And the tracks seem to be going towards the mall. I will photograph them, send them to the rest in the group, and follow the tracks. Okay, so you guys are gonna do the next time. Um, well, I'll follow blue, I guess. Looks like someone that's, someone's at the mall, right? Is there maybe a chance we could get an access to street cameras? I will have to talk with the sheriff to the, in the town hall or somebody and uh, yeah, there's going to be people on the other side of the streets and the tracks will not take you so far. So, yeah. Well, if there's... Well, there's, there's a the tracks go towards the mall like this and that's pretty much where the asphalt street starts so they can't take you all the way. If we could get access to the uh, town cameras, I mean, they have to have some kind of it, then maybe we could notice the strange man as well. Especially as Mr. Jenkins can tell us exactly when he was at his ha at her house, right? It sounds, sounds fair. Yeah, so is there like a means to do that from a separate house or, or should, should we access something near the mall to be able to do that, to attempt accessing the video feed? I'm not even sure how it's supposed to, <laughs> how it's supposed to work, to be honest. I mean, like, as I said, if you want to like, get any thing done with something like involving local police, you would have to talk to the sheriff at the town hall. Well, I think someone has to talk to the sheriff, definitely, that we should also keep an eye on them all. If it's something unusual, then the sheriff might not be able to handle it. Um, probably someone should look, at, look out the window and someone else should talk to the sheriff. Maybe I can talk to the sheriff. I'm happy to snoop around around the mall. This is what I do. So, okay. so, so I get to move to the town hall, right? Yeah, 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 yeah of course, of course. And Agent Yellow and Red. I think I will probably join Agent Green at the town hall to make sure everything's done nice and smooth with the local sheriff and no one offends. Okay, and Agent Yellow. For the last minute, I've not heard what's been going on very well. Uh, uh, Agent Blue found tracks that lead to the other side of the street towards the mall or other buildings nearby. And Agents Green and Red went to the town hall to talk with the chef. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing as last time and make sure that no one's alone. Oh, you have access to your things. Okay, sure. So I'm gonna go with blue. 
Alright, all right. she's snooping around, so you're going to be have to uh, also be concealed to do that. So both the uh, UN agent who are going to be rolling concealment to that is one action. Okay. Of your turns, and uh, I assume perception if you're looking for something suspicious around. So that's the cards for you. Okay. You should be able to move them yourself. Okay, so perception and concealment. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. check so. Okay. Uh, so again, we are using the same initiative. I'm just going to zoom in completely inside. Okay, here I am. Uh, and uh, we, are, we are again going, going with the declarations first. first. No money rolls no should be uh, uh, associating them if we have one to put them, but we do not think of it. We are preparing mock ups and we are going to the resolution stage, like peasants. But uh, okay, so place your cards where you have them, whatever you want to use, and that's going to be perception and stealth for blue and yellow and red and green. What are they going to want to do? I'm going to want to talk to the sheriff and make sure that, um, just see if we can get access to any security footage that they have of the. Th so, all right. So, that's uh, going to be uh, negotiation or diplomacy, something like that. Yeah, either way. I think diplomacy, why not? Yeah, you can try to call him, you can try to like, uh, negotiate with him to give you access, or you can try to intimidate him as a government agent. I think I'd just ask, which I guess is negotiation. There you go, That's the card, you should be able to move it, I'm just going to make it slightly smaller. Okay. okay. And yeah, we are rolling. So first is agent uh, yellow's perception and stealth. Okay, I gotta remember which ones those are. Hang on, yeah. getting yeah, my sheet up. Yeah, yeah, and remember to reduce your stamina and morale of pool. So you're using options. If you're think... uh, getting near to zero, if, uh, if you're gonna get a zero in any either morale or stamina, then you can't play any cards, not only from that particular uh, pool, and you have to take a break. We should put that easy down uh, while going. There, I'm just saying. Okay, so, uh, so, are, is both uh, my actions this turn stamina? Uh, yes. No, okay. No. Perception is uh, takes a point from morale. Oh, okay. What do you mean? I mean that's on the card. We have a typo on the card. Ah. It should be stamina. Yeah, it's a physical action because it uh, runs from awareness. Fair. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna roll this as soon as it as I roll twenty. Left. But yeah. I went ahead and reduced my thing to two, and I'm going to need to take a breath soon. So, okay. Uh, okay. so stealth um, is three. Uh, with with take a... a breath, by the way, that's an important thing. A take a breath uh, can uh, be uh, it's a physical action, and, but it uh, stores both morale and spam. Okay, so that's your, that's your consumer, remember that number, because that's yeah. the resistance of four perception tests. Okay, three, and then perception, four dice with a threshold of three. Oh, I, my mouse accidentally double clicked. Uh, so that, that would be three technically, because my mouse double clicked and I couldn't put in the number of. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. So that's that's technically three. So three on both. All right. And then we have Agent Blue. Same situation. Agent Blue is a specialist in stealth and perception, so actually she gets four automatic marks on both without rolling. Okay, okay. All right. And the. That makes it make it still lose. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm gonna uh, first tell you guys what happens uh, at the mall. So you are observing stuff uh, by the window, trying to stay hidden. And you see, it's not so much a mall as a small general grocery store that you know, called the mall. But there is uh, no actual anything very good of the house without sleeping, say, person behind the counter. It's kind of snoring. And you can hear some noises from the inside. It's kind of weird, it's like kind of a clicking sound. It sounds very weird, like just like something like this. Okay, and uh, meanwhile, good in that. Okay, so I'm rolling negotiation, right? Yep. And then, uh, oh, that's one action. Okay. Okay, you've got four marks to that. Um, those are D6s. Oh, my bad. I pushed the wrong button. This is still Shadowrun mode, I think. <laughs> I have those macros right next to each other on the screen. Two marks. Okay, and Agent Green. Yeah, and what was I doing? Because I, I didn't declare anything. I, I could right. skip, I, I guess. I, I, I thought you just moved perception to be a fucker without saying anything. Okay, so what okay, so uh, no, were, let's okay, let's just uh, let go. What were you going to do? Um, well, yeah, I mean, since Red kind of took up the investigation, uh, the, the the task of talking to the sheriff, I would uh, do nothing <laughs> until the, until Red talks to him. Since, well, we can't both talk to the sheriff at the same time. I mean, yeah, you can both have a conversation with the sheriff, and uh, your marks scored by you are other together you can totally teamwork every single test in this case yeah so so yeah I, i'll do that then okay. Just, just okay just tell me what tell me what i should talk okay, okay so uh negotiation i may be bigger on the screen right now it's a mental skill so you will boost your morale by one and you roll the number of dice equal to your weight which is uh, five and you have uh, uh, difficulty of six. So you roll five dice and leave the difficulty uh, at the default. Okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, the two of you so the two of you are taking the sheriff very much into uh, double crossfire of fudges uh, and harsh questions to demand to see the monitoring in the city. So, so uh, the sheriff initially poses goes like, yeah, but like it's a small town, everybody knows each other, and shut up to be stopping on the street. So he goes like, yeah, everybody knows each other here, and it's like kind of a working man in the back of his squeaky chair. Uh, we, have some we have some cameras in the mall, well, the mall and the library, I can give you access to them. He's like through his uh, computer screen to you. And you can see an old librarian reading a book and then nothing else is happening, just a couple of kids doing their homework. And uh, inside the mall, you see a very tall and skinny man in a black suit and a tie. It's like it's a cunning products on the shelf using some sort of weird angular device that gives some green marks on the products. So, well, we have to take a picture of that and send it to the. Uh team that's at the mall. Yeah, we've got to get it to the team that's gone shopping fairly. Okay. Okay. After receiving the message, we are sending back the, the recording of the sound with the sea trap of what's happening at the mall that we can 
here. We can't really see anything, right? Yeah, yeah you can't really see anything. So. But there's this recording of very weird clicking sounds. Is there anybody else shown on those cameras inside the mall? Uh, they are just sticking the, the behind, the behind the counter. It's very it's early in the mall, as like I said, people will just go to work, so kids are at school. Kids are at school, there is not much movement in there. Um, one moment, I'm gonna take a minute to pause, like in, in real life, I mean. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, sure. We can take a short, short break. That's also a perfect moment to take a breath in game because I need to, to regain my stamina. My stamina. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, mine too. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really low on stamina. Yeah, so you can regain a point of stamina. Stamina and morale in between it before the other agents join you. Can I do that too? Of course. Of course. And if you spend more than one action on it, you are reducing the difficulty, remember. Yeah. Oh, I'll just spend one action on it. Sure. Sure. Uh, it doesn't have cost though, so you can't. Yeah, can't... like you are, if you aren't going to do anything before Agent Green and then join you or whatever, uh, then you, uh, oh, then uh, you can spend all your actions on that. And, you, know, you regain all your actions at the start of every phase. Oh, so they're, they they have to travel over before we actually go, so I, there's no reason you, you, not you to. You can do that. without waiting for the night. Like, okay, know, okay. there's no reason. <laughs> there's no there's no reason not to. Then I'll I'll spend both actions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's toughness, it's right? Yeah, it's toughness, but it's difficult. Right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you restore two points of stamina and the morale. Except my morale's already max. Yeah. Yeah. I'm clear. I'm just okay. saying that would be exactly what. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm back. Sorry. Welcome, Welcome back, no problem. So, so, what are you guys going to do now? You know there is some mysterious team man in the mall, the grocery store. I'm going to head over to the mall to join, uh, join our two... Um, I think we should like approach it from different sides or something. Uh, maybe uh, we should... Uh, like... We uh, apparently... From the information that we have, we don't have an idea of where exactly inside the mall is this uh, thing guy located. So we should probably get a schematic or something, just so we understand where he, where exactly his position. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the different side. It's a very small store. It's a very small store. It's just basically, there is a front entrance, back entrance, shelf, four shelves with stuff inside, and the clerk and uh, the fridges were there. Mysterious person is uh, clicking on things. There is a side door that is the, the drugstore that they could just take a put the carry man there and nobody else. Mm -hmm. Probably two of us should head back and two should enter from the front and smoke or something. We have such hard. I can quietly get to the back and prepare an ambush in case it hit, tries to hit to hit it and run? That would work, as long as we have the back entrance covered by someone. On it. I'll send the stealth expert to do that, that's a very good idea. Yeah, yeah absolutely, this is a teamwork game that very much supports players working together to achieve goals. Really? And back? <laughs> okay, so you must spring the door on the guy. Well, I just want to stay on the back at the back door to until I get told to like get inside and or until he tries to cut it and run. So I'm basically taking an overwatch at the back door. 
yeah. actually, just come to think of it, maybe we can uh, access the alarm system on the store and uh, trigger it before we get scared and do something stupid. Uh, it's doable, so m maybe I can, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of uh, action that would be. But I could set up uh, the well, alarm thing. Green, uh, that would be a hacking. Oh, yeah, uh, I can do that. That's, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. specialty. Yeah, you, you can do that very easily. You get five automatic marks in this particular case to uh, cut a simple alarm to make, to make it green while you guys are waiting outside. Yeah, so I'll do that, and uh, the rest of you guys should kind of all watch, I guess, or, I don't know. Okay, okay. so, you wanna shoot him or something? <laughs> like, gear isn't ready yet, so all the cards that require gear, so you, you technically have the requirements for every single card in the game right now. Okay, so it's pretty, so, uh, sorry, that my job is quickly to let them the shell. So, so you trigger the alarm and it starts the ringing, the clear wave is up on your, what, 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 what? I just quit that chair, and then, and then, and then, and then and the, the uh, team man inside just drops what he was doing, takes the, like, nasty looking pistol from behind his suit, like, just like, crouches together like the sort of a mantis and just dashes towards the back door. So, uh, do you want to like, follow him wherever he goes uh, and track what he's actually going, or do you want to just like, shoot him right now? For the four of you, can probably you know, take him down. Well, we're here on an investigation mission. Do I have some kind of non lethal ammo? No. In that case. You're a government agent in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> in a black suit. I mean, melee is my thing. If I can manage to, like, conk him or something, I don't know. I, this is not me, like, saying what I'm gonna do. This is me kind of like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, you can totally do that because if, if you have delayed actions uh, to technically lay an ambush uh, on this guy, so in a period it works like this. Whenever the, you, uh, you have an ambush situation, then you get to run the number of actions at the person that you are ambushing and so basically in addition to your normal actions in the turn. So say you have uh, two actions normally, and you have uh, the, you know, your co concealed, so you can see with, let's say, four marks or whatever. Then you get uh, to use those two actions at the start of the turn, and then you can get you get you can again in your initiative turn. Okay. So we, uh, technically, you can totally like do that. You dash us to the so you can outside of the initiative system right now. Um, so, as he runs out, am I allowed to, like, conk him, try to knock him out okay, or something? You can, you can spend, your, spend your physical action on melee and gate one to get so, so, basically, does it work the same as everything else, like, where I can spend an extra action to lower mm -hmm. the thing? Mm -hmm. The entire mechanics work uh, uh, synergically and very consistently with it. Okay. So I still have two actions, so I I just kind of want to using like hang on words are being hard for me. I want to try to knock him out with melee. What's this? There you go. I put, I put the action card on the table that we start using in this situation. I want to, I want to, I'm going to spend both my actions on it. I'm going to try to, my best to, like, knock him out. N non lethal, just, like, bonk him. Okay, so you have four automatic marks because uh, you basically have six minus three of your melee skill and minus one because you're spending three actions. And since he can't defend himself because it's your surprise round, that means uh, you are 
putting four marks onto him, and he already used two physical actions, meaning that his stamina is four, which means that you basically drop him unconscious. You're just opening the door to dart, and then you just like hit him out, out outside the head with a uh, fist, and he just falls on the ground like a broken bug. Just Agent Yellow, <laughs> Agent Yellow just kind of looks at him and says, "Well, that worked." Well, Agent well, Blue standing next to Agent Yellow looking at the unconscious guy on the ground just just keeps her gun in her head and in her hand and smiles. So, yeah, uh, the man is really he talks uh, easily to meters and uh, hit in the back of the head, you can see that it kind of like moved his head to the front of his face and then it kind of collapsed. And his face stick down to the chin, like the entire face stick down to the chin, and you can see weird gray skin underneath the, the human skin. You got Mark Zucker. I mean, sorry. You got, you got the alien. What are you going to do now? Well, I think it's, uh, one of us should. Uh... Talk to the clerk to make sure that he doesn't squeal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, I was gonna take a breather to be honest. Well, in that case, how about Yellow and I drag the guy to the city hall and lock him up in the sheriff's jail? Yeah, that would work. Sounds good plan. And yeah. meanwhile, so you can talk to the clerk. Sure, sure. sure. So, yeah, generally, we've already tested a lot of investigations and interrogations. So, uh, we can skip that part and tell you that uh, normally we would play it out, of course, but it's a test and we already tested those mechanics, so I think we can just skip it. Uh, so, the guy eventually wakes up, fixes his head suit, and uh, tells you everything you need to know after being scared and intimidated and interrogated. And we're gonna be testing uh, some combats and uh, actual sneak actions next. But first, let's take a five minute break. Welcome back. We're just waiting for. Honestly, I felt more useful in this than I have in any like any game that I've played in in a very long time. So, good job. Well, Thank you. Well, yeah, the mechanics are there to you know, not only make sure that everybody gets to do things and nobody has to wait half an hour, but it also suggests things that can be done with the very concept of action of a cult, I think. Well, yeah, it's easy to say you can do whatever the hell you want in the game, but unless people know what they can do, and like, then some people just don't want to, not gonna know. So I see all of you back. You see? Yeah, Hello. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. so uh, generally that was just the core rules and social rules at play right now without uh, many complications. So what do you guys think about the mechanics? Yeah, pretty good. And pretty easy to understand once you've rolled through them a couple of times. It's just really easy. Uh, it was it was very quick to find out how everything worked. Like, even when I questioned myself, like on the melee thing, I questioned myself because I'm used to games having different rules for different stuff. But it's it's so much simpler just to have, as you put it, no real exceptions. And that that's nice. That's really nice. I love the combining action rule. That you can lower difficulty by just putting more time and effort into a thing. Um, well, uh, I kind of get confused with the interface, but uh, other than that, that was pretty straightforward. I liked it. Yeah, we have like a team with people with a very different experience uh, since with the RPG games. So we have, I think, a pretty nice uh, 
diagram of approaches to the rules work. Yeah, but yeah, I'm happy to hear that the rules are working. <laughs> I'm like, you have no idea how much my heart is like, trembling the entire time. Like, is this everything gonna fall apart and I keep in the initiative straight and shit? <laughs> so it's literally the first time this game is like played. And uh, yeah, all the interface pieces are placeholders. We are gonna have something that is specifically made to work really nicely with the mechanic. I'm wondering if it's worth the, uh, keeping the uh, declaration phase in social encounters. I mean, especially play, like this one. So I'm not talking discussion where you actually have to play and counterplay. I'm talking like exploration and what we were doing just now. Because uh, I think it flew easier when we just tracked initiative normally for just walking around the town and experiencing the world i mean yeah if uh, the rules themselves stay in situations where initiatives and stuff don't matter there is no point in tracking them we did it uh, right now mostly because i wanted to test if it even works <laughs> but yeah in situations where it's more organic to not track those things there's no point Well, I suppose it's one of the places where the party can just decide to streamline part of the mechanics because Please. like no, s n nothing is gonna get broken by this. Yeah, yeah. so I think we're ready to move to the second part of the first okay. yeah. I had I had, I had one more thing to say. It was kind of just a small thing. The, re the thing where you kind of you can get to a certain skill level that you don't have to roll, that has a very high level of satisfaction to it. It does. And that is that that feels amazing. If when that like the one time with the melee that I was able to have that, I it was great. That's really all I had to say on that. But yeah, that was yeah. Feels like a professional, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Like it kind of reminds me that in like. Some, even if you're the best person at something in some of the other games, you're still you could still fail with a really bad role. It feels like we're actually professionals in, in this instead of how that sometimes feels like. Oh, we're professionals sometimes, but other times we're completely incompetent. Yeah, but because of you only rolling that many dice and scoring that many die uh, marks as you have attribute, that means that if somebody's better than you, then they are better than you, no matter what high sk how sk high skill you have, and also it's uh, like naturally capped by your well natural attribute. Yeah, which is also, by the way, a nice segue to the next part because yeah, in base mechanics, if the difficulty is lower than two or like ten or higher, then there is no control rolling because you can either never succeed or you to get the maximum number of marks. But this is where the resistance and cloud and modifiers come in, which is something we need to really use. Because uh, we're going to the second part of the uh, scenario that we have prepared for today. So you interrogated the captured alien and he told you where their ship crashed and he's scanning the area for search of uh, useful materials for repair. And uh, it took you all day to get there. But uh, you approach a ruined farmland behind the mountain where you can see the fires from afar. So, it's already dark, which means that there is a visual modifier of, uh, like, yeah, first how modifiers work. There are modifiers that can be made by action cards and by scenario rules and uh, by situation on the field. And the thing I did to make it work smoother than in other games uh, is that every single source of a modifier can be a maximum of three, and, if there is, and only the highest one counts in full, 
and uh, every following modifier only counts as plus or minus one to the difficulty. So say you have uh, heavy rain and it's dark, so that one of the modifiers is uh, a three and the other one is a two. That means only the first one counts as four, which is a three, and every following visual modifier after that is only a one, meaning that you have six different modifiers, and the biggest counts as full value, and all the following ones are just a plus one to that. So in the situation with the rain and the darkness, like uh, that would be a plus four, for example. And also there is a resistance in which in a combat scenario is cover. If you see the small number next to the uh, green squares, all of the, every single green square is covered. And yes, that's an art from XCOM. And uh, so when you use a take cover card, you can uh, go to any of the cards within your movement range, which is uh, your fitness times three meters, if I recall correctly, without checking. Then uh, you can move to a piece of cover and you take cover on it from that file that you are in, and that means you get the resistance to everybody who's shooting at you equal to that value. Every, 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 everything sounds uh, okay, so? Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so I put some action cards uh, related to combat already in the upper right corner so you can, take it, so you can see. And uh, the cover rating described in the action that take cover action card is that small number in there. <clears throat> there are also rules in the core rule book uh, if you are making the scenario on the fly because the game has uh, extensive options for improvisation of your game without a GM. So when you're making the game as you play it, then there are rules that are going to have to determine the rating of every cover. In 10 second stops, hopefully. And you can also see there is a fire card, which uh, you, you basically have pistols that have a damage value of 1. Meaning that if you shoot somebody and you hit, then you add 1 to all the marks that you scored, and that's the amount of stamina you take away from your opponent. It's a little different in the core rule book, but uh, we've already and up like through the whole chapter to the trash and we're making out the one that is uh, more complicated uh, I meant less because the rules we had right now in the test for rule book are to be honest not exactly in tune with the rest of the mechanics and they're needlessly complex so we are tossing the, we're bidding that to a better system that I already came up with and it's going to be there in the next uh, phase of testing and uh, yeah, do you have any questions? Um, so where on this interface are the weapons? Where, where should they put to be? Yeah, there are yeah, because gear is not red. Oh, right. Right. Yeah, this is totally the this is totally an XCOM map. <laughs> it totally is an XCOM map, yes. Oh yeah, I recognize it from the games. I, I immediately, I looked at it, I was like, you totally just took a map from XCOM and you unknown, and I'm perfectly fine with this. I, 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 UFO. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The one with the bar. Small scout. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I just figured that we got the actual bar for this testing. I thought it might be a little bit of a lot because one of my like, main goals while making combat mechanics in this game is to make it uh, look play, play, play like an XCOM type game. He's just a fanboy in short. I mean, yeah, I, like, I grew up playing the Rock from the week when I was like seven or eight. My cousin, my cousin was a saint. He didn't tell me he I'm played it from the video on the film in highest difficulty. I'm an XCOM fanboy as well, so you know what? I'm fine with this. I love it, but <laughs> I just immediately recognized it. 
Well, I just heard strange noises from my kitchen. But it was the rabbit. It's a rabbit. It's a thick rabbit. <laughs> In disguise. Yeah. Oh, okay. boy. We better not mean any mint. Okay, so, okay, so uh, remember to roll 1d10 and add it to your initiative. You add a nine to uh, if you roll the nine, you add the number to your initiative. That's on your. I cannot. Oh, uh, I cannot imagine tokens <laughs> anything except sectoids now. I don't know if you noticed, but I like, got the icons from the game. Too. I know, and it. I cannot recognize those, but anything except sectoids now, except the one right in the middle of the UFO, which I'm imagining is an outsider. St I, I know they're not, but... Yeah. I played too much XCOM. I played no XCOM ever, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, a combat scenario is basically... Uh, it looks like this. There is no main task in itself, this is just a skirmish, so your goal is to eliminate all enemy actors, which are the sectoids. And uh, you start uh, hidden, because, hidden because, let's say, you uh, snack up on the enemy, so you can place yourself uh, at the edge of the map, so maybe. And uh, we're going to run a concealment scenario, which is a stealth, where, where we are setting up an ambush. I mean, you don't have to set up an ambush, but you know, it would be nice to test the mechanics. And then we're just gonna run the combat, maybe. Can you give us access to the tokens? Don't you have access to the tokens? Mm -mm. I can't even see the tokens. Oh, They're there they are. On the top. <laughs> and no, I can't control them. <laughs> One second. Here you go. So yeah, basically place yourself in the left corner of the map, so that's a starting position. Uh, you can be next to agent yellow or agent blue, doesn't matter. And starting the game is a main task that has uh, specific rules determined by the enemy uh, stats. So in this case, this is their awareness. And... Uh, the main task is the enemy awareness plus the uh, number of enemies beyond one. So in this case, your main task goal is four. Instead, happens like this: everybody has the, this, this main task is for everybody. Everybody has their own. But here is the thing: you can use your the marks you score in the stealth uh, skill. Uh, for, you for yourself or for anybody else, and if you reach the four, you can uh, put yourself in a position that you want to be for the ambush, uh, while the enemy is rolling their perceptions and they are reducing the marks uh, you scored, uh, attempting to get, get you below zero. If they get you below uh, to zero, uh, I mean below zero uh, the marks, then the concealment ends, and uh, you are revealed in a very bad position. I'm, 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 I'm the Bradford in this scenario. I even have the Bradford sweater. I can go put it on if you want, but my camera doesn't work. But you know, I can put it on and not yet. Wink, wink. In close range. Anyway, back to the topic. 
so the, 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 your goal is to score four marks, everybody separately, uh, while the enemy the task is to reduce your marks to zero, and it's going to take as much time until one or the other succeeds. But you have to spend one action on concealment every uh, every turn. Other actions you can use for whatever you want, including giving uh, marks you scored in a step action to another character. So say one of you is very bad at sneaking, uh, while another one is very good at it. So you can uh, accept the marks between your sides. Does it make sense? Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so it's also dark, but it's only like two points of dark. So from now on, even though like the base, uh, I'm going to set the base modifier a little. Okay, so it's dark, so for sneaking purposes, you have a positive modifier of 2, which reduces your base difficulty to 2. Your skills still uh, and the um, combined actions still work as intended. So there is not no changes there, I only changed on your macro, the base difficulty from uh, 6 to 4. And uh, for your enemy, unless they have some means of seeing in the darkness, uh, the difficulty is increased by that number because the same modifier that's positive for you, which is darkness when you're sneaking, is uh, making their life more difficult when they're trying to see. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's uh, go with the declarations. Physical initiative, physical initiative uh, the slowest uh, is uh, Agent Red. Uh, so concealment is a um, physical action, right? Yep. yep. You have it, you should have it at the uh, yeah, you have it at the uh, top right corner. It does exactly. You have to spend at least one action on that. You can't spend more. Okay, and I will do use my action to conceal my. All right. All right. And, and uh, one hex is one, is one meter, meter, and you can move yourself uh, fitness, uh, fitness to the times three. So in your case, that's nine hexes. For free, if you want to move yourself more, you have to run, and that's an action. So I could move here, then. But uh, in consumment, you don't track specifically movement, uh, that's just generally for later, because uh, it would be rather tedious. So there is a, a starting point, the chosen point where you want to be when you get the, uh, the marks, and to just abstract your road in between, and, uh, unless you get discovered. Okay. So yeah, you can just uh, spend your actions uh, on uh, concealments or anything else here. You have fitness of 3 and uh, no points in stealth, so you're basically put this uh, But he's gonna roll later, right? Sorry, you cut out at the end there. So your base difficulty is 4. And uh, if you draw right now, because I like, uh, actually have room to mark how many marks you scored, so you can do it properly. Sorry, I'm just gonna write down the marks that you scored. Because, uh, how many actions are you using on concealment? Uh, I only have one physical action. Oh, so okay. okay, yeah. So that's one. You're alone. Because you normally roll in our declarations. Okay, you got two hits of concealment. The next physical initiative is Agent Yellow. Hello, hello, Agent Yellow. Are you here again? Yeah. 
45. Yeah, he's back. Uh, I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe I don't know if he comes back. Um, was it was it up to me? Oh, no. Yes, yes, yes. You are Agent Yellow. Yes, you. Okay, because uh, I'm back on my phone for just a minute because oh. my internet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, anyway, so I'm going to I'm going to concealment using both actions, which means it's base difficulty of four, skill of two, so I would just auto success, I think, if I use yeah. both actions. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't. I don't, know I, I don't know my stat in that because. I'm waiting for my internet to come back up again, but um, that's how many marks I get. Yes, you get three marks. Okay. Oh, no, oh, no, so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, and also in stealth situations, it's slightly different than in like uh, situation uh, combat-wise. It's uh, not characters uh, themselves, but it's offense and defense, uh, like offense first and defense later. So after all of you move, then uh, the sectoids will look for you, even though they have initiative of seven. So, because, you know, we subtract the marks anyway, so there's no point for them rolling now. Uh, blue. Blue is an infiltration specialist, so she's spending one action to s conceal herself, gaining four marks. Because I imagine the my minus two does nothing. Um, yeah. And I would like to spend my second action to help out the rest of the team. Can I split my marks between two people? people? Um, technically, sure. Technically, sure. Yeah, you can spend your marks wherever you want. So I would like to give two marks to red and two marks to green out of my next automatic four. And I'm reducing my stamina by two. Okay. okay, Agent Green. Um, yeah, so how are they? Is there some form of combat hacking? I'm not sure you mentioned that, but just... Uh, uh, is there a, is there a form of combat hacking or something? Uh, yes. Technically, Technically in Aperion it's a uh, yes, yes, at least we have uh, all kinds of combat hacking, so I'm gonna... Uh, just uh, let you do that. Give me a second. So yeah, you have uh, multiple options. Let's say that the uh, aliens use Wi-Fi. Just, you know, it's not a real setting right now, we're just screwing around. So you, you can do multiple things. You can use uh, use a hack the world action to take uh, to use your marks to uh, break the devices they're using including guns and visors and all kinds of stuff you can upload a virus or uh, that is going to cause them problems or you can use uh, programs to help other others uh, aim at you i mean at the enemy not at you sorry and uh, you can also uh, basically spam them with the uncuts, making make it that difficult for them. Let me show you. So yeah, here you got those three cards. You have uh, Hack the World, which basically remove actions from any devices that the aliens will be using. You have an over the bot that uh, adds uh, modifiers for mental task uh, used for, uh, for you know, your allies or yourself. There is also another one for physical actions, which I'm going to copy in a second, but it will be copied itself. And there is a spam bot that prevents uh, the enemy from using devices. So, is there someone uh, who can uh, hit the enemy um, uh, from current range uh, on the next turn? I mean, you are right now uh, making a stealth action to get yourself in a good position for an ambush. But uh, you can use uh, your spam bot, for example, to you know, take away uh, 
to create a negative modifier for the enemy looking for it. Yeah, I was thinking either either doing that or maybe buffing someone if someone wants to take a sniper shot or something like that. Using the yeah. overlay pot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for a Yeah, so mm -hmm. I can only perform one of the bots in this turn, right? You have to, have to uh, spend one action on fulfillment and objective I can do that with whatever you want. Ah, okay, so I spend one action on concealment then. So, uh, am I. Uh, I added the two cards for you, so malware is uh, basically a virus. That has its own actions uh, that basically that basically bother the, the enemy and optimizer what is uh, makes physical actions easier for your people. Okay, so I use one action to perform concealment and uh, I have uh, stealth to is that is that the correct skill, right? Agent Green, you have Stealth 2 and Fitness 2, so you roll 2 dice and your difficulty is 2. Alright, so I got one more. Okay. okay, so that means... Uh, you are going to have three marks to the total of the four. And what is the other action you want to do? You have a mental, two mental actions to, that you can use whatever you, uh, you wish for. The consumer is physical, right? So I should yep. take off my stamina. Exactly. exactly. And, and if you want to use your mental action for something, you can. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to use a mental action. I'm going to use. Uh, I'm gonna use an overlay bot, yes. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna give the extra marks to Blue since she's a sniper. Yeah. Yeah, but, but overlay bot is uh, uh, for mental action only, so what you want to do optimizer op bot. Optimizer bot, then. yeah, optimizer bot. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this for all. No, it. They both have they mental have the same uh, the Ah, the type second type of found. Testing successful. Yeah, overlay bot yeah, is supposed to be for physical actions and uh, the other one is supposed to be for mental actions. So yeah, so, yeah you, you, you said correctly, you're going to use the overlay bot uh, and it's going to add the, the number of uh, marks uh, that you scored for the next physical action you find your time. Uh, Alright, so how many, uh, how much should I roll for this? Uh, 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 as it says on the, uh, uh, as it says on the uh, card, you are rolling your logic with your IT skill, agent green. That's gonna be four dice, and that's for automatic marks because you have the IT skill of five. With the base difficulty of uh, six. For mental tasks, that means uh, it's one. So you just choose choose a person, and they get the, the automatic modifier of yeah, so, uh, for the next physical action. Okay, so that's that's going to be for blue. If blue is able to shoot, or maybe who's able to shoot red or blue. Really, a ship. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for whatever physical action it's going to be. Alright, let's see. Alright, let's see how good are the sector is. Okay, those bastards are actually pretty good. Okay, so basically, they scored the uh, three, three marks, meaning that they reduced the marks you scored on three. So, 
red and blue have one mark scored towards uh, the uh, task. Uh, I mean, the challenge rating, let me put the a... They see in the dark, bastards. They actually don't. They, they have a target number of... So they should have eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should, they should have six. Yes. Doesn't the visual modifier apply to them? No, because they're second. It's fine. There you go. There you, go. you are all marked against the main task. So yeah. And we are moving to the next turn. So again from the top. I mean, from the bottom, red, yellow, then blue, and then go. So you are sneaking to the rubble field. We are closer and closer to the two tiny alien gun. The big black eyes that just scan the area looking for intruders, so you have to be very careful and move very slow. Watch out there. So, uh, yeah, is it my go right? Yes. Yes. So I'm just gonna s wait. I can move and then do a. Uh, do still be concealed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if, if you can, uh, you can uh, uh, generally give me while you are waiting for a number, so it's been a third scene, then you don't have to move to the map as long as you're you know making progress towards the main task. And you are a three D, you can be abstracted. And when you reach the main, you know, the threshold of four, then you can just put yourself wherever you want to be. Okay, I got it. Uh, I think I'm going to keep trying to conceal myself again. I have a question. If we're keeping the concealment exactly as it was, which means that we're sustaining the action, do we have to pay the cost again? Uh, no, no, you don't. It's a sustained action, you don't pay the cost again. You only pay the cost for concealment one. So we we paid the stamina cost once, and as long as we co just sustain it, it we're only paying in actions, as in spending yes, time. Exactly, in time. exactly. Cool. So yeah, you're only using actions to do not reduce your behavior stamina uh, at this point. So we only okay, roll so for success for how it went. Yeah, you're only rolling to uh, gather marks to work the main task. Okay, so I think I'm gonna roll the concealment again then, right? Yep. Yep. So that was, uh... That was, uh, my fitness. Exactly, exactly. that was your fitness of 3 against the difficulty of, uh, 4. Well, technically, in this situation, only the cycle should get a negative modifier, you shouldn't get a positive modifier, if it doesn't matter. it doesn't matter, I think. Yeah, technically, it should be 6 for you and 8 for them. My bad. Not for an eight? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, free. you're sneaking. The darkness doesn't affect what you're doing. They're looking for, They're looking for, you. for you. The darkness affects what they're doing. That's ah, why okay. I have like, to modify it. Yeah, I fixed the macro again. It should be on six. Okay. You want okay, to roll again? Got... No, no, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, agent, yeah. Okay, I'm going to... I'm trying to figure out what bonuses I would have. I have no idea. Okay, okay. you're rolling thickness of 3 versus difficulty of 4. Difficulty of 4, but I'm spending both actions on it, so okay. difficulty of 3. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So 3 dice, difficulty... Yep. yep. I've told it to roll. Um, it just says rolling the dice, so... Yeah. So you can move to blue meanwhile. When you throw your dice, I'm gonna uh, uh, try to come up. 
for Chaturi. Right, so uh, I'm gonna sustain both my actions from the previous phase, which means my four marks of concealment and two extra, I mean, and extra four marks of concealment split between two other party members. Oh, which ones? Uh, definitely green and, to be honest, depending on what yellow rolls. Which, it still says rolling. <laughs> But probably, yeah, probably. yeah give me. Yeah, yeah, my my internet's being very dumb today. There you go. There you go. You got yourself three. Nice. Well, then plus one to yellow and plus one to red if I can spread them however I want. It's gonna bring us yeah, all the four. Of course, you can do what you want with your mark. There are no finalities. Question. That leaves me with one mental action. Take a breath doesn't specify which. Uh, it's a physical action for the. Uh, oh, because it runs toughness. toughness. Okay, yeah. fine. Well, then I guess that that's it for me. It's okay. And green. Um. Uh, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you just cross off 30 feet, how many marks you score towards the, uh, the, the first one, I mean the... Uh, uh, how much again? Uh, two, two, uh, two dice have, against two? Uh, two dice with the uh, difficulty of four. Oh, oh see, now, now it rolled race dice. So my roll was better for you. It took a minute. Wait, is it difficulty of... Four or two. It's, it's difficulty of four. You roll two times. It was two the previous turn because I screwed it up. I made a mistake. Okay. Uh, Physical action or two mental actions to get control to. Uh -huh. um. Okay, uh, so what happened to the marks that I uh, saved uh, that I uh, uh, had during the previous phase? Uh, uh, I when didn't. I, I didn't use them, but you can keep you sustaining, can keep sustaining it, it, and yeah. I guess yeah, you, you you can keep sustaining it uh, for no additional cost. Yeah. Okay, but, so I'm uh, going to do that. Okay. okay. So I'm going to give. Uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, you, know, you, you know, you can, you know, you can give those marks to yourself, yeah. and then then you're going to have uh, two pieces of that that's what you need. Come again? Uh, you could uh, give those marks that you got from uh, the uh, bot to yourself and use it to enhance your self task. And that would mean you have uh, two marks with one. And if the enemy doesn't score enough marks, then you should basically uh, reach the task threshold right now. Oh, well, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Okay, that means you have uh, four marks and I'm going to roll for the enemies. And they now have the negative modifier, not the positive. And score is one. So uh, basically everybody had three marks. Okay. Okay. So uh, right now you you manage to get yourself into an almost nice ambush position uh, with the agent Green using his cell phone to highlight good good places to to hide behind so the enemies can see him. And you are basically in a very nice position, and you will, to be honest, succeed in the next turn. So since this is a test, we can just assume that you are ready in an ambush position. So you can place your tokens wherever the hell you want, and I'm gonna go open the page with ambush attacks. Oh, I... Because yeah, you, you, you would probably succeed that task in the next turn. 
Yeah. And we already tested how stealth rooms work, I think, for ambush. So we can just go where we want now? Yeah. Yeah, set yourself up for a nice position to ambush. And remember, you're a melee fighter. <laughs> I have pretty good marksman, actually, I think. I think you, I'm just you actually fight. do, yes. Well, you can toss your pistol. <laughs> okay, okay, so this is how it works. When you place yourself in, uh, on the map into a position where you want to be, uh, like Agent Yellow is right now, but you have to be a mist as a melee fighter. For some reason, oh, my internet went down on my computer again. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna place you right next to, uh, I don't know, one of the covers on the I have a specific place I want to be put, but yeah, I think I can do it now because my internet's being weird. Okay, well, how about it? So, basically what it works, what is, how it works right now, you are in an ambush situation, meaning you get all of your actions as bonus actions at the start of this turn so you can basically do whatever you want with them and then normal initiative goes and you still get your normal action during this turn but first so what do you guys think about that mechanics because uh, it works the same way not only for ambushes but by speaking fast people and so on as well Slightly, slightly, slightly what? I think we lost Ray. So, so uh, anybody else? Uh, meanwhile, what he restores his internet? What do you guys think about that mechanic? Well, stealth is definitely more easy to fail at the beginning of the task, which is actually quite cool because once you're concealed, it's it's harder to get detected because you keep accumulating the marks, and unless they actually notice you, then you're gonna always have a couple of net marks over. So, the longer you sneak, the bigger chance you have to actually succeed. At least in this particular case, that's how it looks like. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of like set up like this. Any, op any opposed main tasks are set up like that. It's easy to fail at the beginning, but once you're entrenched and you get your foot in the door, then it takes a while to fail. It's kind of because like, I didn't really want the investment people put in the mark to this court to be, like, immediately go down the drain because of one bad roll or something like that. Once uh, they're almost done with their task. Yeah, I, I like the lack of natural one, to be honest. And actually the trick with the optimizer bot that you can use to boost yourself up is pretty swanky. Yeah, because uh, it's there to make the characters that aren't exactly physical to be able to still participate in stealth and so on. Hey, race back. Hello, 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 Ray. Can you hear us? Yeah, I've, I've been here listening to you guys. We just didn't, we just didn't hear you. So uh, the stealth is slightly cool. Uh, oh, oh, I was... You, can't, you only got like half the sentence. I agree with a lot of what um what was just said. Um, and it's slightly... It feels slightly repetitive to me but it's still it's fun it's it's fitting I, I it's just the one thing that i was kind of thinking during this like wow we're doing the same exact thing for a couple turns and um i don't know well yeah you know technically uh, normally you would have more things you can do with your other actions like for example how agent uh, green was using his uh, hacking skills to help him in this task, you can uh, use it to do more political things, and uh, yeah. yeah. But in general, when you are covering tasks, you can you know, either repeat things that you've already done or do something else. 
It's uh, all in up to you. But right now we have a bit of a limited number of options since we're running the head test for the game. Yeah. It's it's a situational thing that I that that I just said. But you know what? This it stealth is stealth feels like it should, which is great. Yeah, yeah, and you know, in a normal game, you know, if you got narration of the you kind of telling how the situation changes and so on. I like the teamwork element of sharing marks between other people. Yeah, it, yeah, it represents like when somebody who's an expert in sneaking or whatever other task because every single main task in the game works the same way. So, so uh, the sharing of the marks represents how you know teams can actually help themselves. If somebody who knows how to do things well can give tips to somebody who is like he wants at something and so on. Uh, as a note, my internet is back down on my computer, so if when combat starts, I'm gonna try to explain what I'm doing the best I can from what I still see on the screen, but... Yep, yep. okay, okay. I just see the starting positions for everyone right now, and it's... Um, and I don't have internet on my computer right now. Hopefully that changes again soon. Yeah, hopefully. So, uh, Aiden Green, what do you think? Um, to be honest, I uh, kind of didn't understand the last week all of those uh, all those stealth things that you mentioned where and where or in I placed additional marks on myself yeah yeah so uh, the, the book that you use the overlay board adds the numbers of markers you score to uh, reduce the difficulty of your next physical task which you was the concealment because you have higher mental initiative on your physical, so it made sense to you know use it on yourself because it made uh, you get uh, basically more marks. Because it reduced your difficulty to the level where you didn't have to roll, because it reduced it to one, which means that you automatically get two marks because that's what your fitness is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, that means that I. Uh, from the difficulty of six, I subtracted four marks that I got from the local day part, and then I subtracted two. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, yeah exactly that. You have the difficulty of six and the stealth skill of two, meaning that your difficulty is four, and then you got the maximum possible modifier from the bot, reducing it to one, because the maximum possible modifier from one source is always three. Mm -hmm. Alright, okay. I get it. So, uh, so uh, generally, the most of the crunchiness in the final system is going to be from shifting the modifiers, and then the easier, more narrative systems are going to be completely bereft of modifiers with a starting difficulty or dice or something. So, it's, you know, uh, there's, a, there's going to be degrees of modularity of how crunchy you do and how many mechanics you want to have in your game. But this is right now the, you know, the most mechanics version of the game. Looks like we're gonna have to have a limited version of stealth mechanics so people don't get bored. <laughs> we can have to, yeah, if somebody's not gonna be interested in stealth and so on, so they can use uh, a limited version of that to make it into a single role even. So, uh, Agent Dredd, what do you think about Stealth Mechanics? Yeah, so I, uh, I enjoyed, the, it, it was simple enough to understand, um, it got the job done, I was just thinking like, maybe it needs, I think maybe because my character only has one physical action, and everything's a bit bare bones right now, but it feels like it needs something else so it doesn't just become a repetitive role thing that keeps going like other people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is going to be mental actions you can also use uh, the, the whole list and in the final game there's going to be much more than those 40 action cards that we have right now. And uh, yeah, there is going to be ways that uh, much more like broadness. There's going to be gear that you can use to help yourself uh, for good mental actions and so on. And other people will be able to help you even if somebody has one action for a task on you. And you're an officer, so you can use command action to let us know what to do. 
give us yeah, perks and buffs. Can we bring the command action card to the screen? I don't think we have it. Uh, no. I'm pretty sure I did it. Uh, one second, I have to find it in the list. I actually really don't. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you can use the command skill to help people with their skills to uh, make it better for them and so on. That's a mental action. Anyway, we are in a uh, position to fight. So you can see on the screen, there is uh, not only fire pistol card, but also I take aim, which is another use for your, for, for your mental actions. You only have one physical action, but you can use your mental actions to take aim and reduce your difficulty, you can... Uh, so take aim shouldn't be from awareness if it's mental? Yeah, the, the take aim has our own skill, it should be from weakness, from awareness. My bad. My bad. on the card to be fixed. I put it right next to fire, so it's visible. So yeah, it should be from awareness uh, and the uh, unappropriate skin not from marksman and yeah, yeah there's a there's a type on that card. Could be resolve and conditioning. I mean you are I mean, taking a because one of the uh, skills from our percentage should choose investigation. Yeah, choose investigation. I just didn't copy it properly. What skills have different uses? Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, if everybody has bonus action. We're going with initiative from uh, slower to faster, and then we're solving the other way around. So agent red. So we're going from physical action, right? I mean, yeah, we're from the bottom first. We have physical action. You can't, you can't delay your mental action to also happen at the same time as your physical action if you want. Yeah, I probably want to do that because I'm probably going to take aim and then fire at one of the. Okay. Okay. So uh, then you can already start rolling and uh, take aim is uh, your investigation with wit. So you have five dice for that and the difficulty of. Sorry, what was the difficulty? Three. three. Difficulty was three. Okay, okay so you can uh, for fire, you have a modifier of minus two additionally, meaning that you will be shooting with your awareness and three dice against the difficulty of uh, one, but it's dark, so it's going to be three. Because now the difficulty that may be difficult for the aliens to see you makes it more difficult for you to see them. And you score two. Agent Yellow. You just shoot at? <laughs> I mean, I'm. I mean, yeah, you can, or you can uh, use take aim and shoot the uh, same as agent red. Okay. Just, uh, well, I okay. Well, I'm going to use my mental action to take aim. Does the physical action work the same on fire, where I can just reduce the threshold by one by using both actions on it? Yeah, yeah. exactly the same way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take aim with my one mental action, and then I'm going to spend. Yeah, and then I'm going to spend both my actions on fire. You're reducing the difficulty further by one. Your base difficulty is uh, six plus two because of darkness, uh, so uh, you're going to be reducing it by one with spending additional action and also uh, with whatever you pay with your fire action. I mean, with your take aim that you are going to be rolling. So, that, so that's investigation, um, two dice with the threshold of three. Yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, 
Okay. okay. So we have a difficulty of six and four uh, dice. No, I have difficulty of six minus your skill, so you have a difficulty of three and four dice for sure. Difficulty of three, four dice. Gotcha. Noise. That's a noise. Okay, okay agent the blue. Well, I would like to do basically the same thing Agent uh, Yellow did, which is first rolling for my take aim. Okay. okay, so you got yourself a modifier of two with your take aim. So, so now it's six minus your max function. Yeah. And minus extra one for the second fire. Yep. Nice, nice. Agent, Agent Green. Um, let me think. Uh, I have two mental actions and one physical action, correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so for my um, mental action, I uh, I can... Uh, okay, so I see that each of these bots is one action, so I can technically do... Yeah, correct? yeah. You, you can technically uh, put the resistivity for yourself or to uh, somebody else, and you can uh, use uh, either two actions on that bot for yourself, or you can run it for two different people. Um, I want to actually use malware. Oh. Does it affect everyone or just one? It affects your target. My target. Uh, and spam bot, does that affect? Also, my target or everyone. Yes, yes Spambot also affects your target. Spambot is actually going to be better for you in that situation because malware uploads a virus and it will only take uh, action at next phase. And uh, Spambot is going to do a screw them immediately. Uh, okay, so who's. Uh... Who were the shots fired against? The guy marked with the yellow or with the I blue see. cross? Uh -huh. So uh, that was the only guy who got shot by the previous uh, player. I uh, right? think so. For me, that's the only, only mark uh, target marks, uh, I've seen before. I have to to mark, so. Okay. I so so Ag Agent Blue is shooting at the guy with an X. I don't know who is Agent uh, Yellow and the red shooting. They're shooting at the other one. Ah, uh -huh, I see. Uh, and the other two are not, the other three are not visible yet, right? Yep. Ah, yep. uh, okay. So then I'm going to mark this guy and I'm going to use spam bot of this guy. It okay. should auto, uh, auto, uh, auto hit, right? I should get four. Yes. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you can connect to the enemy in some way, then you can just uh, spam his devices and computers uh, with spam bot. And you can connect in this situation because it's a bot, so uh, the aliens use like. Yeah, gathering. All right. So, uh, okay, so that guy gets affected by spam bot, and I. Um, also use the uh, I use second mental action for overlay bot and uh, I uh, I'm going to give uh, four marks to red four marks uh, uh, I mean uh, 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 a modifier with the overlay bot not marks a modifier all right so and uh -huh. so then uh, uh, let me see Roll what? 
Yeah, so I guess a modifier of uh, two for red and modifier two for blue. Sure, sure. Modifier, the second modifier for whom? For blue. Okay. Okay. And, and, that, and my, that, for my physical yeah. action, uh, for my physical action, I'm going to take a breath. Can I do that? Yes of, yes, of course you can. And I restore my stamina and morale, right? Yep, by, by the number of marks you score in the in the, in the top list, yes. Oh, and uh, I have to roll for that, right? Yep. 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 So, how much do I roll? Uh, you have a top list of uh, two, so you roll two back. Against difficulty of six, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, uh, so I can... one morale and one stamina, and one stamina. So all right. So that's it. It's six because it's five. 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 To trochę bez sensu to rzucamy. Ok, so uh, reds and blues next physical action that's modified uh, plus two, remember, reduce your difficulty by two. And uh, we are bumping it. So going straight from the top, where first agent dealing with recovers his uh, stamina and morale, then blue is uh, taking away four stamina points from the uh, second number one. Over here. Then uh, the other guys are taking away together six stamina points, which is what it has, and it falls down on the ground. Okay, so uh, you fire in unison and uh, the enemy is, uh, one of your enemies falls on the ground shot while the other one is uh, quivering from being shot up. And we basically that's it for the bonus action. So uh, you can now have your normal thing, just maybe take cover because the game is high back and don't take cover, but might not keep much left of you. Not much, Not much more than from that one sector that will be open. So that's a physical action that I would highly suggest. And again, it's a declaration stage, so go into the red first. So yeah, I'm going to take that advice and take cover where I am. Okay so, okay, so now every shot uh, that are playing against you are having a resistance of three. Of five, so. Of five, so. So if it's higher than ten, then you can't. Okay, okay, agent yellow. Okay, taking cover. Is that a physical action? Uh, yes. Uh, that's a physical action. Okay, so I'm going to take cover. And. Yeah, um, I'll use my other physical action to shoot at the other one again, I guess. Okay. Okay. Uh, roll for that. That's just, um... Oh, what was the modifier? I can't remember the modifier because it's dark. It's, uh, it's uh, plus two. So you have a difficulty of eight. Shouldn't okay, difficulty of resolution eight state? minus three, so five. Because our... Like the fast Correct. guy is giving us buffs. Right. Oh yeah. Actually, oh yeah. Actually, uh, uh, I think it might I be better, better to move the rolling itself to the resolution stage. But yeah, if you. Uh, but yeah, if you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm. I'm. Uh, better with like buffs and debuffs and so on to think that way. It makes more sense. All right. I think uh, I, in that case, I'll just. What I'm doing is I'll just be taking a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm just actually my focus because like you're technically supposed to roll with the resolution stage. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was in one of the previous versions of the rules you were rolling in the declaration stage, and I don't know why I called it to that. My apologies. You wrote the resolution stage, but that's the only way it makes sense. Anyway, yeah, you are going to be taking a shot, bro. Right, so seeing that my slightly slower friend is gonna shoot the guy that I shot a moment ago, I'm gonna just take cover and try to take a breath. Okie dokie. And green. Um, I'm also spending the physical action taking power, which uh, costs your stamina, correct? So if it costs your stamina, uh, but it still costs you an action. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So, I'm using that physical action for the uh, stamina. And uh, now I'm using my first. And, uh, no, actually, no, actually, I'm not using any mental actions so that this one. Uh, is uh, uh, but does that mean that uh, the uh, guy uh, that's wounded uh, still has the spam on uh, uh, Yeah, it's a sustained action, so as long as it's a it does Okay, so I uh, sustain that. Do I need to spend uh, morale on that? No, we don't need to spend morale to some action. All right, all right. So basically, then I don't do any uh, mental ones. Okay. okay. So now, so, uh, now uh, in the, the, the pop of formula declaration, it's going to be blue now. You are shooting. No, I'm, no, as I said, I'm, I'm hiding and taking a breath. Oh, okay, so it's yellow who is shooting. Go on. Okay, I'm shooting. It's it's a oh, crap. Four dice, threshold of. Five, I think. Yes, it's eight minus three of your skill. Oh, I'm talking to myself. So yeah, it's uh, uh, difficulty of. Oh. Thanks for that noise. That was amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. my body. <laughs> My body tried to laugh, but <laughs> didn't work. But that still deals that to still stamina deals damage, to right? Stamina yeah. Damage, right? Yeah, it still deals to stamina damage, and uh, the alien himself was uh, raising a gun to fire, but couldn't because he was only like, three dice modifiers and so on. And then he got shot. And fell to the ground. Now it's uh, the alien turn, so they are going to do. They were going to pop, 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 which is here. Two are using the cover. While the last one is expending another physical action to get to this cover, but doesn't have a free action to take it. So that's basically that for them. And they just go. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, know. sorry. Uh, was that for me? Yes, you are agent. Yeah, sorry, you were cutting out a little bit there for me. Oh, my bad. Uh, so do I have to take cover again? No, no. Do I have to continue? No, no, you, you, you are still in cover. It's a sustained action that costs you zero. Uh, so you have one physical action in cover and you can do whatever the hell you want to be in there because it's the next declaration I'm probably going to take a breath then. Well, I can. Okay, okay. Agent Yellow, are you going to be using uh, your mental actions for something? Mental actions? Um. Yeah. Yeah, because your mental actions are slower than your physical one, otherwise you can skip your physical action. I'm just checking really quickly at the carpet to see if I want to do anything. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take aim. Yeah. Is yeah. it actually, yeah, you wait a second, yeah, you this, this is a, this is a question. Is there like something akin to suppress, like try to keep someone still? Uh, yes, but the action card isn't, isn't one of the default ones. Okay, I was just trying to, because that's kind of what I want to try to do, but 
uh, if you if you want to call uh, like uh, the Xcode equivalent of Overwatch, is a default action. It just means it just means you are delaying the physical action until the start of the next like, declaration phase. And entire bit because you were being a robot. Oh, sorry. So you can delay your action in an Overwatch, meaning that uh, you are delaying your physical action until the start of the next declaration phase. And you also see what the areas are going to do, so I'm going to tell you what they're going to be doing. All right. And so you basically, can, you can to do what you to basically, I'm delaying my action until next turn. Okay. So you can see that see what they're doing okay well, that this one it might, uh, looks like he's going to try to move to flank you okay so i'm i'm basically on yeah. and yeah. yeah and you can see that this one looks like he's going for that piece of okay and this <clears> one <throat> looks like he's going to go into that piece of cover where they get okay. where they get there they might shoot you they all right down in there. I so I get to I'm delaying till next turn. Gotcha. That's. I mean, you can uh, you, you can delay up to the start of the next declaration. So you, you can't you, you can't you know say what, you, what you're doing now. Wait. So I'm I'm confused. <laughs> if you are delaying your action, you are getting it at the start of the next declaration phase as a bonus action if you don't use it during the same declaration phase that you delayed it. Gotcha. You can't do. All right. In that case, yes, I will delay and watch the guy in flank and wait till he comes around. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. And then what you're going to do? Because I know it in the declaration stage. I'm, aren't I just delaying? I mean, you can, and then you're going to get it at the, as a bonus action at the start of the next uh, declaration phase. That's what I'm going to do. Basically, I'm delaying, waiting for him to come around, and I'm going to shoot him in the face. Okay, okay. sure. And they didn't do it. Okay. Um, I can move for free up to like three times my fitness without an action, right? Yep. So I'm gonna move my ass on this side of the cover so I can have a better view at the guy who's gonna try to approach me. Um, and do I have to sustain taking cover as an action? I mean, you can't. You, you don't uh, pay the cost for sustaining. Yeah, but I pay an action. Yeah, I... No, it's like you can see in the the card description that sustaining it costs you zero. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Fine. Then, like, I'm still in that in that cover, and I will be shooting at the approaching alien, hoping that I will take him down. I mean, yeah, that, that's why you're faster than him, so you see what he's doing, and you can react first. Okay. Agent Green. Okay. Agent Green. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking at the video cards and on the screen just to understand what happened when I'm doing. Uh, which alien is who shooting at? Right, right now, uh, Agent Blue is shooting at this one that I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. and, nobody and nobody else is shooting this one. Agent, uh, like Agent uh, Yellow is going to shoot this guy at the start of the next one. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, the uh, two mental actions that I have on... Uh, I think I'm going to uh, apply a spam bot to to this guy. Uh, this guy. Okay. There. Okay. Sure. Sure. This guy and this guy. Yeah. Is, it, is 
to the physical. I, I see one that you were thinking, not the other one. But... These two guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they get. So this is an automatic hit, right? Or uh, uh, you have a uh, EP six minus your hacking, and your hacking is four. So, yeah, so, it's not an automatic hit, you have to technically roll for them, which is five dice. Five dice and difficulty of two, right? And difficulty of two, exactly. Okay, okay. so five gets the maximum possible negative modifier. Um, yeah, so two spam bots and those guys. And, yeah. uh, yeah. and, uh, I'm just thinking whether it's worth shooting with my Mars in the ship. It's always worth shooting. You have three, uh, sorry, you are agent green, so you have two dice with the difficulty of five. Or you can use your, uh, the, I mean, I know you already used. So, yeah, it's what you want. Okay, I'm going to shoot the lady, same guy that blue shot. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to be resolution stage, so uh, green, shoot the guy. Okay, I got one more. Yeah, so that's the two side. You shoot him and you can see him swiveling and it's like some yellowish blood coming from his hip. He takes two or he has two less stomach. Next on we have blue. Right, um, so that's... When you were shooting the guy. Yes, I'm, I am shooting the guy, I'm just asking because he's in cover, so does the... I mean, he's technically moving right now, so he's not in cover anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's great. That means I'm gonna shoot him. I must have missed if they didn't any move the 45. Noise. Nice. the token. Anyway, so that's... Anyway, so that's uh, five, so uh, yeah, combined with, uh, combined with the green shot, you shoot him square in the chest and that second just falls on the ground, bleeding yellow. Yeah, yeah and it does it. Sectoid scream sound. I think I'm missing some context here. Okay, so <laughs> now the action, so this sectoid moves into a flank meaning yellow that red. yellow and the red aren't protected from this side of the cover. He raises the gun to shoot. Click, 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 click. Uh, makes the computer listen to uh, 50 new ways of enlarging your phoenix and the alien gun doesn't fire. And this guy, he doesn't try to shoot, he's taking cover. The red thing, the red you were taking a breath. I recall correctly. Yeah, uh, what role was that? That's a toughness yes. one. Yep. And that's against six. Mm -hmm. So, see, you already have a synergy here. You regain two stamina and one hour. Eh? So, you already have a synergy here because, for example, the overlay bot also helps with taking a breath because of the physical action. For example, you can use action cards with synergy with each other even between teammates. Because the basically the number of things you can do is unlimited. Anyway, next declaration stage for Chapel. Um, I am probably going to take, uh, well, I'm going to shoot at the, uh, the fellow who's flanking. 
Mm -hmm. And also, I don't know if you noticed what the Agent Blue was doing before, but you can hug the cover you are taking and move where, uh, within your range without, uh, you know, losing the sustain. Oh, oh, so I can move and keep my sustained cover? As long as you are hugging the cover. So if I, if I were to move here, yeah, that yeah, would but, be fine. But, but, but fine, and you're still in cover against all the enemies. So I wanted to take a... Well, I wanted to hold my physical action until I took aim. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you can... Uh, easy, easy. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to take aim, then I'm going to fire. Okay. Okay. Agent yellow. I'm in a pretty good spot against the one that's right in front of me. So I'm the one that's flanking around the side. I'm going to take aim. Well, I'm going to delay so they happen at the same time, obviously. Take aim and then take aim and then shoot him in the face. Yeah, yeah. Shoot him in the face using both of my physical actions as well. All right, all right. And, and... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Stay where I am, uh, take aim, shoot the guy, and then hide. No, I, okay. no, I don't have that, that much stamina, so just take aim and shoot. All right. All right. And, and uh, you can see uh, that the one uh, it looks like he's going to stay in cover and he looks like he's going to shoot, while the other one looks like he's going to run to cover. And he's looking suspiciously at it from that. Green. Green? Um, okay, so... Um, the war, I have to reroll the spam bots. Have they, have they been used on that? No, you can just play them. You don't have, don't have to reroll them. Okay. Okay, so... Um, to sustain, uh, I spent... Uh, uh, do I have to spend an action or not? You have to spend a mental action for that, but you don't have to spend morale. Ah, uh -huh. so I spend uh, okay. So I spend one mental action to, or two mental actions to sustain the spam bot uh, on two of the aliens. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Or uh -huh. you can. You, can, you have those. you have the spam bot on both of them, so if you just spend those actions, you're going to remain sustained. Yeah, so I'm doing that. I'm spending my actions to sustain the spam bots and um, um, let's see. And I'm uh, if I use take a breath, will it cancel my cover? No, no it would. Okay, perfect. So I'm using take a breath. So I'm rolling uh, two against the difficulty of what. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just like uh, just, uh, aside, just on one aside, the uh, FYI, technically, when you're using spam, but then the guns in the case uh, are resisting with their firewall and CPU, but they will have the one for both, and they can't technically do anything because they have to use all of their action to fight your spam, but then your spam bot has more marks than they can possibly accomplish, so they have no actions left. I'm just not only for that because they have no chance of they have no chance of making any difference in the situation. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that's just you know the rules explanation uh, why am I not uh, rolling on that list? Anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so wait a minute. So for the um, uh, take a breath, I have to what? I have to roll two against the difficulty of uh, four, right? No, six. Six. no it's a basic difficulty of six. Six, yeah. Yeah, the take up is always a difficulty of six unless something is changed. And you regain two morale and two stamina. Alright? Alright? Blue. Uh yeah, as I as I said, I'm gonna take aim. And then I'm gonna shoot the one I marked, lowering the difficulty by two. Uh, he's staying in cover, so I'm basically removing his 
cover mm-hmm. by that? Yeah, his cover has a value of 2 and you are in flank to him, so... Well, so that's 3 damage to him. Alright. All right. And uh, now it's a time for a new one. Okay, so... First... <laughs> Uh, nice. Um, first things first, I'm... Oh, goodness, my sheet's disappeared. I'm taking aim first. So that mm-hmm. that's investigation, correct? With a wit, yes. So you okay. have two dice with a difficulty of the... Two dice, two of and yes, you can always use combined action if you have to Oh, uh, those are a difficulty of three, by the way. It didn't matter. Well, it does matter. That's two successes. It did the double click thing again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. So that's two successes. So that's lowering it by two, the, uh, yeah. the uh, difficulty. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's eight, since I'm shooting, it's eight minus three minus two. Exactly. Uh, okay, difficulty three on four dice. Exactly. That goes nice. Yeah, I was, I was worried that combat mechanics have to conflict when I see it going smoothly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, okay. No, yeah, so yeah, so that's five uh, points of stamina, and uh, this is the guy who spent uh, stamina already, so he just drops uh, drops couple. He's uh, uh, heavily wounded and unconscious and he's in the yellow, and the other guy doesn't have any damage. It's like four against one, so I'm assuming that uh, he could be probably big hit. So, so the agents have defeated five aliens, six even, and they recovered the UFO for the agents. Congratulations, uh, we, we, we won the Senate. Several of those. I'm surprised how many of these kills were actually me. <laughs> Yeah, it feels good yeah. being useful, doesn't it? <laughs> it yeah, feels I'm amazing. How good the rolling was. Oh, the rolling it... was too good. I didn't believe it was. <laughs> hey, D10s like me more than D6s. <laughs> Clearly, and D20s. So, how do you guys like the combat? That was entertaining. The hacker is so, so good. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I... I try to make it so that every character, you know, class is useful in every situation. Yeah, I gotta ask well, you later how the sneaking in combat works. If I sneak, do I get the, like, extra actions next turn? Like, if I, shoot some, if I shoot somebody, take cover, and then spend an action hiding, I mean, on concealment, do I get, like, extra action next turn? If you reach the challenge rating, yes. It might take you a couple of times to reach the challenge rating, so I don't know if it's worth So, no sneak attacks like in D&D. Gotcha. Yeah. Like, like uh, in this situation, you were fighting three sectors, so if you heed, you would have a challenge rating equal to their awareness plus two. So that would be five, and you'd have to score five marks before you could do the sneak Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I mean, if you have thickness of five and you would get total targeted, I mean, I'm sorry, if you get overlaid by the hand, then you can do it in one turn and then just sneak attack by the cost of one mental action for the hacker supporting you. Because it's a team game. Yeah, 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 that, that, that would work. All the action cards have synergies and you can use them to uh, help each other at yourselves. Always hollow target before. Yeah. Always hollow target. Yeah. Also yeah, disabling is. shot. Also disabling shot. There is also a card uh, optimizer bot, it does the same as the overlay bot, but for mental actions. So perfect for all the social encounters. Yeah. yeah because it is. gives you profile on your interlocutor and you just know what to say. Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, I don't know if you played uh, the, the one of the new Deus Ex games, uh, but uh, what the main character he entered was he had special, uh, you know, uh, cyberware for that. He can see the enemy biometrics and heart rate and stuff like that, so that's basically that one. Awesome. Well, well, yeah, but for that to work, if one of the agents probably has to have that kind of target, 
does everyone have it by default? I mean, in Project Aperion, the uh, actual setting, uh, pretty much everybody is using augmented reality hubs so to, you know, communicate and display information for themselves. So, you know, as you get the normal. Yeah, that makes sense. Everybody's playing Pokemon Go in 24 seconds. We would. All right. Yeah, and with uh, someone's luck, you can be catching two cats. Yeah. yeah, now imagine uh, what a hunter can do when everybody's using a hub and uh, when you get connections to somebody's system, you don't just get it automatically like during this test, you have to have some <laughs> you know, that either a cable or a radio connector or laser connector or even Wi-Fi bullets or whatever you want to make somebody else. Like say Red could shoot the guy with a Wi-Fi bullet and then he could hack his hub, he's playing neon cuts instead of the battlefield. You know. So, yeah. So it's it's good. It's not only a good debuff, but a good debuff goal. That's kind of where I initially thought when uh, someone mentioned that the hack was good. I thought about well, what would happen if the opponent was like using rocks or blowpipes, or it was like a giant pterodactyl or something well, like that. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, obviously, if you can't get a connection to hack somebody, then you can't do that. But you can still use programs to support your teammates, or, you know, yeah, to your exactly. to your And control the environment yeah, that's later. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and you can, like, control the environment uh, and so on. You can get you know, some drones and lots of stuff. I look forward to more, like, leadership and command options in combat. Yeah, yeah the, uh, I, I don't have action cards ready for that, unfortunately, but there are options for social characters to be used in combat in a similar way to give orders and support your troops uh, using their mental actions and so on. Or people ah. take away from the morale of the opponent, because if the opponent morale goes to zero, then they can't use any actions, including physical actions. And same goes if your stamina goes to zero, you can't use mental actions. Then. So it's like a combat manager of rats. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, we get to support and buff and debuff from the battlefield uh, in many ways. And same goes for all the social situations and all the like, stealth situations and all the many other situations, really. Hey, Ray, with this character, hmm? you can actually be good with throwing grenades. Yes, he has throwing. Yeah. yeah. Or pistols. <laughs> I wonder. I, I wonder if I rolled like what I would roll for throwing, right? If I would fail. Well, you can see. always try. What's my throwing? Uh, uh, three. Uh, three. Oh, three. Four. Let's see. So, yeah. Can he throw? This is gonna go well. Yeah. Yes, he can. Uh, he, actually can. he actually can, yes. <laughs> Unlike and Ray. Throwing groups are uh, you know, also kind of fun, because they basically you roll as far, up to as far as uh, the number of uh, marks you score, and they also are counted towards hit normally, unless you're, you know, tossing the pad cover on grenades. And uh, you didn't try doing it, but uh, you could shoot the cover in, and destroy it instead of shooting at the enemy behind the cover and so on. So there are many options on the combat so, and that leads me to a question. So, what do you think about combat groups? I think it was really good. <laughs> it was entertaining and I felt like I was an XCOM, which I love. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, so I yeah, yeah. the map, but it did feel like XCOM. I really did, like, even if I ignored the map, that felt like XCOM and I love it. Uh, yeah, good, yeah, so uh, I, I noticed that uh, around uh, when we got the, uh, we started getting to the combat part, uh, everybody like, kind of knowing what the mechanics are working and started to explore synergies and so on. Which is good, because that means it takes like uh, three decades and a system that is good to play, amazing. Well, yeah, I think the hardest part of the game is balancing the modifiers. We played a very limited version of them at the moment. Because there's like no gravity, no lag, no interference, but it's gonna be harder on a spaceship. But yeah, it it, it works pretty well, and knowing that I'm so glad. I'm so glad this. And sorry, I interrupted. 
continue. <coughs> well, basically, I just like to point point out that balancing the stamina and morale is gonna be a big part because I ended up on one point of stamina, which means that if anybody shot at me, I would I would drop unconscious. I had stamina damage. Oh god, I had such little left as well because I was like, okay, if this 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 goes on much longer, I'm gonna have to take a breath because I had three in both morale and stamina at the end there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like and oh, you can still do some actions, but then you think that we've been dealing like approximately three to four points at every shot, so basically every single one of them would get down after getting shot once. Yeah. Like that was like uh, I was like uh yeah I at that point I was like I need to take a breath, like I was gonna be next turn because honestly, I I was like starting to be like okay if I get shot I'm just screwed. Well yeah we would all drop like flies if somebody shot at us once and actually hit. Well, well yeah co combat is designed to be about i mean everything is designed to be about managing your stamina and morale against what you're trying to do and pace yourself and in the combat situation com cover is just very important because nobody can just stand in the open field and shoot at people because you know, weapons are... <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i <laughs> they're moving around the sides yeah, that's that would happen. That yeah, would yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, that that's what that's that's by design. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, in, uh, going back to the stairs now. Uh, imagine you were using cards to support yourself and get yourself modifiers and so on during the stealth scene, and the enemy would be using sensors and patrolling and so on to discover somebody actually coming there. So I think that would also make you know less uh, you know less samey every turn when you get more things going on, right? Um, also, are there actual cards for like uh, recovering from uh, enemy hacks? I imagine there are enemy hacks, so there probably is just the same Yes, yes, there is. I'm gonna show you in a second. Yeah, so there's a Hey guys, I'm gonna drop out. So I'll see you guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks, yeah, for, thanks, coming thanks for coming out, coming around to help testing it. Uh, I, appreciate it. I appreciate it, and you know, you can always drop me any input and DMs on DMs and Discord. So, uh, oh yeah, anytime, so, uh, man. I'm happy to help anytime. Yeah, there's gonna be. Yeah, there's gonna be. Uh, gonna after that, I'm gonna like get the character creation ready. I like I hope to get the character creation or something a mini game around soft classes that I'm gonna be doing soon. So, you know, stay tuned. And, and uh, yeah, so if you if you see the defender uh, card, for example, this is a this is, is an anti-hacking bot that prevents and uh, makes hacks uh, more difficult. It's specifically against spam bot because it can get the number of actions required to its rating, and it can just give those ratings to firewall to make it more effective and fast. Uh, guys, you just run that and you just keep firing at you. Yeah, this, that's, that's exactly what I was yeah. Sounds pretty much. So, so uh, overall, uh, overall, how, how did you guys like the base uh, system of the game? <laughs> uh, I was, I was a lot of fun. I would have been really, really bummed if my internet didn't come back up. <laughs> Yeah, and it's so easy to learn. I mean, the basics are just so clear-cut. Yeah, it feels like I have the basics of the game just like just right off the bat from playing just this one thing. I mean, yeah, we ran, yeah, we ran a one quick scenario, but you know, took, took a, a lot of hours, but because we had so many explanations and questions in the phone, and so on, but you know. Yeah. I also enjoyed quipping XCOM. That was great. <laughs> 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 
Um, I assume you asked me because uh, there is a lot of garble stuff. Yeah, you're again. you're garbling out a bunch. But yeah, if you ask me, well, I I am not enjoy so I I like the fact that uh, with my support role, I was able to actually do something. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, okay. thanks okay. for coming, guys. I'm gonna be putting the video on the internet at some point. Anyway, uh, it's 1 a.m., so I'm uh, uh, Thanks, guys, for coming, and I really appreciate the uh, feedback. And the next one is gonna be character creation. I want it to be like this whole kind of mini game with a couple of classes and things like that. So it's gonna be stuff. And the next game is actually gonna be a campaign in the actual circuit of Aquarium. So. Spaceships. Yeah. 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 We will steal a spaceship, please. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, later, guys.